my uh, personal splits. Start from power on. Typical speedrun.com timing for this game starts when you get control of the hero. But just for sake of consistency with what I've been doing, I'm going to be starting when I turn on the console here in one second. Alright, we're going to be using fast disk speed, and I'm on a 90k PS2. Just helps with loading times with a lot of PS1 games if you swap to fast disk speed. DQRT8 today. Alright. That needs to save yet. Okay. If you've been following my attempts on this game, you probably know what I just did, but uh, my disc one for this game actually does not get me very far into the game before it fails to read. Um, so I'm actually playing off a CDR for Beginning. No video. Look at that. Hang on a second. Okay. I knew I'd forget something. You'd have thought that that one I would have set up ahead of time. There we go. It's fine. I just got to crop it. I also, of course, forgot to uh, switch over to chat so I could catch that sooner. Gotta move closer so the mouse actually works. This video doesn't run at the same resolution as the rest of the game. Once the game starts, I'm going to have to correct it, so I'll just leave it like this for now. Alright. Fortunately, at the start of this year, we changed the rulings on some of the English um, language games. Most of them, except for the early NES games, the first three NES games, so we do allow turbo controllers now, so I've got breaks to do stuff like crop. <laughs> I'm really in the first half hour though, so I might actually have to just install for five seconds and fix it. But pretty sure if I expand it to the full size of the box now, you're going to be missing the top and the bottom of the screen. Maybe? Is the top cut off? Yes, it is. Alright, I'll fix this real quick before we get moving. SRC timing starts when Hero starts walking anyway. Moving. Oops, I'm still holding turbo. Okay. 
Grab some money out of mom's dresser here. Head upstairs. Rotate the camera. Up into bed. I gotta go grab my stream deck off the floor. It's a lot of stuff I'm juggling at the start of this run because I gotta walk over to the PS2, turn it on while I'm holding my stream deck, head back down to the... Here, okay. Then I gotta do the disc swaps because my disc one doesn't work. <laughs> A lot of stuff to forget. How long is this like 10 hours? I've estimated 19. The record is 15 and a half ish. Uh, High Spirits has that. He can keep it, honestly. I don't I don't want to grind this game that much. I got second place practically by default. I'm happy with that for now. Okay. Oops. Come on, open the drawer. Don't talk to the guy. You're gonna notice me rotating the camera a lot in this game, and I'll probably explain this multiple times, but um, when you're walking up and down relative to the screen position, you move like uh, 75 or 25% faster, a third faster, than when you walk left and right. Up and down, if up and down is 100% speed, left and right is 75%, and diagonals are about 90%. So I try to avoid walking left and right by rotating the camera as much as I can. And it causes me to bump into a lot of walls and question whether or not I'm actually saving time. <laughs> Need to zoom in on my chat window a little bit, actually. Yeah, the record on English Dragon Warrior 7 is really good, and the Japanese record just makes it look not really good. If you watch any given, let's say, 10 minute chunk of the Japanese record of this game, you will realize how bad I am at this game. <laughs> Japanese record, which there are version, or there are language differences, uh, but the Japanese record is like 12 hours compared to High Spirit's 15 and a half, and it's not all text. That is just uh, crazy good at both this game and DQ4, which runs on the same engine, the PS1 version of that. Like, watching Keta move his camera around, it looks like he actually sat down and grinded out every room in the game to make sure that he was moving his camera optimally. Uh, I'm kind of winging it. I don't have many plans for camera movement at all. Um, again, I'm just trying to avoid walking left and right. Yeah, Ice Spirits is currently doing a casual run on 3DS. He's also done a speed run of the 3DS version. His time is like, I think he got barely sub 24 hours. Purple Mario did one, I think within the last year. He got a couple hours faster, but... Neither run is terribly optimized because neither one of them wants to grind it. Much like how I don't want to grind this version because it's an all day event. Oops. What? How did I talk to you? I'm holding up. Oh no, this is the this is the trigger. Never mind. Okay. After you take a few steps, she just talks to you. Oops, wrong button. I've been playing other Dragon Quest games, and the button configurations are different on all of them. Oops, I need to buy my Nine Herbs. That's the bag. Okay, I need to trade your cloth armor for your cloth armor just to unequip them. And real quick, I'm gonna give these to her. <laughs> yeah, I started learning this game in mid-December. Um, 
And, you know, my history with the game, I'd just beaten it, like, twice over the last ten years. I didn't grow up with this game. I haven't played it a lot. Um, so I had to basically, like, learn cave layouts and stuff like that, not just boss strategies and random encounter strategies. And my first run of this game was mid-February. It took me two months to learn this and practice it enough that I felt like I could do a run. <laughs> Yeah, Ice Barrett's record also does not use turbo. And, and like you're saying, the hardest part of that is just sitting there mashing the whole time. There's enough buttons on the face of this controller that advance text that turbo doesn't really save you that much time. It just really helps because now you suddenly have bathroom breaks. Um, I was watching his record run, and at some point in the run he says, Yeah, during this run, which is, you know, 17 hours long, uh, I've got, I think he said, four 40-second breaks. Like, that's not enough. I, I would be running this on Japanese if we didn't change the rules, because the Japanese runs have always allowed turbo. And I had already been thinking about learning this run in Japanese um, when we discussed changing the turbo rules. That uh, just gave me extra motivation to decide to learn it on this. Where am I at right now? Uh, I need to go to the ruin, right? And my notes up yet at all. This game uh, has something in common with DQ4, which is that you do so much backtracking in the first area that sometimes I forget which step I'm on. Especially if I've actually reset the game. Oh, I don't know if I've ever reset this game and started over. DQ1 to 9 attempt? Yeah, I've still got the shirt he sold for his first attempt. Oh, what am I doing? Beat it. It's actually my only shirt that has a Twitch logo on it. So what's going on in the story here, if you're not familiar with EQ7? Um, we're currently hanging out on this island we live on. It is the only known island in the world. And actually the only island in the world. And we're here with the prince just kind of screwing around in the ruins because there's literally nothing else to do on this island. It's just a little fishing town and a castle. But... Yeah, this has been kind of our pet project, is just trying to figure out how to get into these ruins because the door is sealed. And uh, Kiefer found a scroll in the library that said, oh, there's, there's a shiny thing on here. Maybe we should, uh, maybe, maybe it's this ring that my mother used to have. Oops. Over there. Talk to this lady. Well, but yeah, he put the ring on the statue, it didn't work, so we're going to find this pearl. As far as I know, this is a complete waste of time. It's required story triggers, but I don't think this pearl does anything. We show it to her, and she says, oh, I don't want that. And I'm like, oh, maybe it's the shiny thing from the scroll. Maybe I immediately found it in the well. Uh, spoiler, that's not the case. But we need to do this. So here we go. Uh, yep. Nothing happened. Pearl Lord back in the pocket, and that's the last we use it. To my knowledge, that item just doesn't do anything else from here on out. Just takes up space in your bag, but it's fine. There's always room in your bag. Eh. I have to talk to you. Hey, no, you're not in here. It's much later. 
All right, so that didn't work. So we're gonna go talk to this old man who lives up on the cliff over here. Also worth noting about camera movement that there are um, a lot of places in this game that you cannot rotate the camera 360 degrees. In fact, the most you can rotate it is, what is that, 12.5 degrees? No. Uh, half of a 45. 22.5. That was close. We'll see that a lot in the ruins, but also outside this guy's house is like that. Okay. I gave the scroll to the old man and told him to figure it out. You can see here, that's as far as the camera rotates out here. But then in here, I can rotate it all the way around. Oops. One slow roll in my house. Don't know why people do that. No traffic out there. Oops, castle. Almost went back to the ruin. I don't know if you can sell the pearl, because you do need it for that brief period of time, so the properties on the item would have to change after you use it. Um, basically it would have to take away the key item and give you one that you can sell. But maybe it does. There are a lot of key items in this game, just because of the length of the game and the fact that you've got all the mysterious shards, which are each their own item have the same name a lot of the time. So there's certainly room in the item table to have an extra pearl orb. It's a barrel. Alright. Oh. Camera's still rotated. There are a lot of uh, staircases and doors in this game that rotate your camera for you, and I just kind of assumed that was one of them. Wasn't. All right, bringing Prince Kiefer back. He's gonna argue with this old man for a bit. They're gonna insult each other. And then he's going to tell us that the door doesn't open with a ring that you stole from your mother. It opens with friendship. You have to believe harder. He also says something about a chosen one here. Prince Kiefer thinks that's him. It's actually me, but he's not going to notice because we're both going to go there and try harder, believe harder. Yeah, the bag was pretty much necessary by the time you got to this game. You couldn't put all your shards in the characters' inventories and in the vault. They all take up space. Plus, characters come and go in this game in a couple of different points. They join and leave your party, and when they leave, all their stuff goes under the bag. And it'd be pretty inconvenient if Maribel left and then... You, uh, had to go to the vault to get her stuff. Alright. Well, the guards are like, hey, Prince Kiefer, stop running around. Oops. They take him back to his room and he waits till night to break out. Oops. Uh, speaking of things that change the camera, um... There are a lot of events where you start talking to somebody and suddenly the camera rotates to fit a certain direction. And it is faster if your camera is already pointing that direction. But I don't do that in very many places because I haven't memorized all of those triggers. <laughs> That's room for improvement. Okay, back at the statue. We're gonna pray and 
believe in ourselves. That's all you need is a pure heart. Yeah, that's that's you, Prince Keeper. Which I don't know, he's not that bad of a guy. Maybe it would have worked if Hero weren't here too. So there's some wording on the floor that gives some hints about the puzzles in here and the history of the ruin. Um, if you inspect it, you'll find out that the hero can actually read it, even though it's in some uh, ancient language. But I always think that goes to the right. Hello, stairs. There we go. Those rooms and this one, I can only rotate the camera a little bit. This room, you can't rotate it at all. I don't know why. Now we're in the ruin proper. So we got some puzzles in here. First of all, we're going to snuff out this flame. Candle's going to, or statue is going to scoot up to relight it. I'm going to hit the button he was sitting on. And in here... Is a treasure chest. The Saint's helmet. I need to get the sword, shield, and armor as well. But that's a start. The only piece that's uh, kind of before the area that you need to use it in. Oops. Oh, I don't want to remove the helmet. I'll head downstairs. There's another piece in that chest, but we'll get it last. This room is one of the more difficult things in the game, from a perspective. Oh, I got it, though. Don't screw it up. Oh, I made it. Nice. You can squeeze under that door as long as it's not flat on the ground, and it's a very tight timing, as you saw there. I didn't waste hardly any time and barely made it. If you don't stop walking, you can probably move, like, one tile out of your way and be safe. Still make it, otherwise you're gonna smack into the door and have to start over. You're intended to push all the, um, what are they, tables? I don't know. They look like tables to me. Um, and then step on the scales again and run to the door. This puzzle here, um, there were some branches depicted at the beginning. One of them had a leaf on the left, the next one had a leaf on the right, the next two had leaves on the left, that's just the direction you need to walk in here. The standard level of complexity for a JRPG puzzle. Some of the puzzles in here are actually decent for JRPG puzzles, but JRPGs set the bar pretty low for puzzles. Usually there's just a bunch of switches and you have to hit them all once, but some of them in here are at least color-coded. This is the second hardest thing to do in this game. Oh! First try. That's fine. I have to do that at least one more time in this run. Maybe I'll show off how hard it is to... Throw an orb onto a pedestal. Or maybe it'll just look easy. You won't believe me. Usually I have to throw that like four times for it to actually land on there. The collision's awful. Never once remembered to step on that raft before accidentally stepping to the right. So that's not a time loss versus my PB. Okay, this puzzle in here. Ooh. I didn't do that right. I could have moved him one more. You. You. This is one. I, that was weird that I could push that like that. Push. Push. Okay. 
You're just matching up the general element that the monster represents with the color of the button. So the, you know, water looking dude goes on the blue tile, etc. That's about it for puzzles in here. Now we just, eh, we just missed the door and then, uh, yeah. Around here, do some sailing, eh. This is the part where I feel like they ran out of ideas because you kind of just get both of the other two items by sailing down here. Unless it's possible to get one of them without the raft, but I don't think so. Definitely not the second one. The armor symbol in the text boxes. I don't think so. Uh, think sword first, right? Then it's keepers. And the other one. I could use that life acorn there. I think I did in my last run. I usually forget to use it later. And save your game at that book. this puzzle, you just need to light three torches with each torch, the braziers. Play enough DQ builders that you would think I'd be more confident in the pronunciation of that word. Um, if you look at the base of these statues up here, you'll see that that's where you get the patterns for uh, which torches you need to light. You can very vaguely see, like the one on the left I think has three blue squares. Yeah. If you climb up the ladders, I think you get a better look. Now we get a land shard, which is our first shard. We're gonna see a lot of these in this run. We'll see that there are 18 of these pedestals here. I apologize if that made a windows noise, I forgot that was still connected. Slap these in here. Yeah, each of these pedestals needs between like two and six shards. So I don't even know exactly how many there are, but there are a lot. Oops. Okay, but we didn't have enough to complete the, uh, the pedestal, so we're not going to know what they do yet. We go out that door there, the Kiefer recognizes this area. Um, in the opening cutscene of the game, they were crawling out of... thought I was timing that better than this. This uh, little trapdoor here. <laughs> I know where I am with the world map, yeah. There was a world map sitting in the middle of the room where I went into that portal. I'm not going to be picking that up. Kind of cool though, there's also a picture of the world map on the floor in there. And as you get further into the game and more islands unlock, uh, that, I, that map completes itself. In addition to the one that you can carry around, it's you, right? So our dad's back from his fishing trip. Um, that sailor tells us that, in this area is very laggy, um, tells us that Borcano found something while fishing. And if you don't talk to that sailor, then Borcano won't mention it, even though he plans on giving it to you. <laughs> so, we talk to him... Tells you that you were born after a five-month pregnancy, which is not the average length. Um, 
That's all yeah, you heard I found something. Here, you want this thing? He encourages me to go show it to Kiefer, but I'm not going to. She'll find me. Dad's just having a good time eating uh, the fish he brought back. Does it have a 100% run? No, but it has a run where you... Rather, well, no one's done it on English to my knowledge. But the Japanese leaderboard has a run where you beat all the bonus bosses, which is um, God in the first bonus dungeon and then the four spirits in the second. Over here. Over here. Almost took the long way. Yeah, the 3DS version, they did very much change the beginning of this. I don't remember exactly how. I haven't played it since it released. But I know the ruins are just, like, completely replaced, basically. I know there's a new area on the north side of the island that doesn't exist here. Um, but I don't remember what you do with it. But I think the, uh, the Japanese Four Spirits run is only like an hour and a half longer than normal RTA. I don't know if Keta's done a run of that. I forget who's on the board for that. Keta's run for the normal category is like 20 minutes faster than the second place Japanese guy, so... If that helps illustrate how much he's studied this game in DQ4 as well. It also has the record for um, DQ4 PS1 without manipulations, though they recently just started allowing RNG manipulations in the PS1 version of DQ4. So the board got merged, now he's third place. <clears throat> okay, we've got our... Final shard we need for this, very coincidentally, very conveniently, all three of the shards we found go to the same pedestal. So, what's gonna happen? There's a picture of a lump on here, which we're about to find out is an island. Um, a map of the place that we're about to get teleported to. Yeah, that's kind of the thing. I don't think the intro is any shorter. When you're playing this game casually, you're not going to get into combat until at least an hour after you start the game. Um, you can see that I am currently 32 minutes in, though I started about 4 minutes late, you could say. I gained control of the character about 4 minutes in, but it takes 30 minutes to get to the first battle, even in a speedrun. Alright. We don't really recognize where we are, but Maribel claims to be going home. Let's see how that goes for her. Seems she's found some new friends up here. She doesn't know what they are, but their methodic jiggling is making her queasy. Three slimes. I didn't change the message. Speed. That's fine. First time with a marathon, yep. Uh, so, you're going to see us use slow message speed a lot in this marathon, and that's going to be pretty much any game that uses a turbo controller. As you can see, at the bottom of the box, the little arrow appearing where it's waiting for me to advance text, but if I'm using a turbo controller, pressing A quickly is usually faster than the fastest, uh, you know, Call it a automatic message speed where the text is automatically advancing and you don't have to push anything. There's a conversation here because there aren't actually any monsters on our home island there. Kiefer's excited that he got to fight him. Maribel's just freaking out. So we're gonna have to investigate, figure out what happened, where are we? What were those blue things? They're methodic jiggling. Here we're gonna meet a lady called, uh... Matilda. I knew I could come up with it before she told me. 
I've played this before. Hey, Nacho. <laughs> oh yeah, Dragon Quest is always a good lurk at work stream. Definitely my go-to series when I just want some background noise. Practical also lurking at work and not t reminding me to change my message speed. Alright, so Matilda is ending these graves here. Um, he offhandedly comments, boy, it'd be great if I had some flowers to put on them, and Maribel, for some reason, just has flower seeds in her pocket. Airs them. Throws them all over. Doesn't bury them or water them or anything, so I don't know. They might take. They do take later. We go into town, Matilda immediately disappears. She was escorting us for those four steps we took. It's not possible to get a random encounter in that short amount of time. Probably could have run in circles and gotten to do some combat with her. I don't know what her stats are like. Take 12 gold from this guy. Except this guy. So there's this guy in this town called Hank, and he's in the Witness Protection Program, and swapped houses with this merchant. And immediately upon talking to this merchant, he explains all of this to you. And says, wait, I shouldn't have told you that. And he's right. Then he sells me some stuff. Oh. There we go. Alright. Alright, so here we meet Patrick, who is a very young child who uses very large words, and it's kind of weird. Kind of a strange, uh, thing in this localization. For the most part, this game has a very direct translation, but you can tell in the beginning of the game that they were trying a lot harder to make people use, like, bigger words and fantasy words. And then somewhere around, like, the midpoint of the game, it just goes to a much more literal translation. Because they realize, oh, it's it's gonna take a while to translate a thousand pages of text. <clears throat> we don't actually have the budget for this. Is also why uh, DQ4 DS does not have party chat. They realized, oh, a lot of text in these games. Okay. So Patrick's dad is dying from unspecified wounds. He says a green color stone could heal him. Whatever that is. Find out later. Zelda's in here. She's still not wearing a lot. Um, she isn't going to help us. She just came here to see if anybody's in trouble. We tell her somebody's in trouble, and then she leaves. for comments that there's a viscous mass of depravity where Matilda's heart used to be. It's again the Rexwood localization. Oh, come on, stop dancing. Wow, triple run fail to start off the game. Oops, an accidental attack. dancing now. Alright, I do actually need a little XP. I should have done the rest of that. Did one slime run away at the start or two? Uh, I'll fight this one. They haven't seen me. Both of these enemies can make my characters lose turns, but whatever. Yeah, I didn't hit Q. 
Kiefer. Kiefer is the one with all the damage. Six XP so that she hits level three off of the first boss. And we're gonna death warp at the bottom of this cave, so that's why I'm not using any herbs or anything. Now well, we're getting lucky with the runs. And chances. Um solve there. Careful with the collision on these things. They're a lot more round than they should be. It'd be a lot easier if they were just squares. Okay. One one space too far. There you go. Again, rotating the camera to avoid walking left and right because it is slower. And here is the green color stone. Fortunately, there's only one, so I can't break it on accident. Hilda's gonna show up and break off a piece. Thanks. Kiefer's got so much health right now that I'm gonna unequip his armor. But also, you know, if I were to just parry, I would take half damage. Of course they kill Hero before he gets a chance to use that seed. I can use the string seed while Kiefer's dead. Oh no, the string seed did get used. Good. Perfect. Oh. Alright. We'll head back to Patrick. Give him the green orb shard. Patrick with the... Casual, casual misogyny there. Hilda may be just a woman, but she's very strong. Thanks, Patrick. Look at all these big words this kid uses. Where did he learn all these? There's no books in this house. Free revival here. Because uh, Maribel needs to be alive for this cutscene. I 
This game's actually pretty sneaky about that. I don't think there are any scenes where you could show up with a dead character and then the dead character needs to speak without the screen fading to black first and giving you a free revival. It may not be true, I don't know, I'm thinking about that. Specifically about Deja. Okay. Got our free heal. And back over here, I need to remember to equip everybody. This is the best part about Turbo, is just equipping your characters. desperately clutching to life, he has managed to conquer death itself. How old is this kid? Alright, so Hank tells me that he was... Oh, also, there's this thing I keep forgetting about in this village where all the women were kidnapped. Um... And presumably they're in the tower to the east, and Hank was over there and got beat up. And then that's where you come in. And now that he's back on his feet, he's gonna join us. So Hank is the first of our guest characters we're gonna have in our team. There's gonna be quite a few of those in this game, particularly in the first uh, third or so of the game before we unlock class changing. And the way they work is that um, it's a lot like DQ4, they just act randomly in battle. Um, they also act like, for purposes of enemy targeting, they act like the second character in your team. So he'll soak hits as if he were standing in front of Kiefer. And they also all have near infinite HP. Okay, we're already on manual. Three. We're gonna hope he doesn't attack Keeper, but it's not really worth reordering the team just to avoid that. We want to see Hank attack because that's his most worthwhile action. Can also cast Sap, but that doesn't help much. It makes Kiefer do like two more damage each time he casts it, up to two times. This boss doesn't have much HP, it's better if Hank just attacks. If Kiefer ever gets attacked, I'll probably have to stop Kiefer and have him parry. Go, Golem now. It's gonna get the whole team. Oops. Well, oh, that's great. Ah. Whole team to uh, level three. And I screwed up my split, so I'm gonna. Start them. Time is over. 49 minutes in. Close this box. Close enough. What? Wait. What did I 
you just do? No. Okay. I'm just confused. That was correct all along. I thought you went up before you went down, but you go down, and then you go up. It's Dragon Quest, so you can't simply go up a tower. Towers have to be these big mazy things where you go up and then you go down and then you go up and down and up and down and sometimes you start at the top of the tower and work your way down. Oops, this is another one of those. Thanks, you're in quest four. <laughs> EQ5's got one of those too. So, up this staircase, the music changes. Which I didn't notice until I'd done like three full runs of this game. But that actually happens in quite a few dungeons. Music will change halfway through it. Oops, down. I might get a fight for that. Maybe I should have cancelled on the stairs. Explain what that means later. Oh, hat. On this knife. Flip it. Oh, give. Mirabelle. Shield. Seed, but we use it later. Uh, heal. Heroes herbs. Okay. The hero has the heal spell now, so I, uh, can use his herbs on. Maribel learned Blaze at level 3, that's why I needed her to get that 6 XP. We're kind of just going to have Hero Tank here at the start. Champion. This guy likes to waste your time by parrying. He also likes to waste your time by casting heal up to 25 times. At 310 HP, his defense is all the way down. Mirabel can attack. Wait for Hero to get hit again. Oh my goodness. He had a very high damage roll there. Alright, well. I think. I think Airbell should hurt herself. Sense reset. So that kind of cancels it out. And the Kiefer doesn't do much damage without any sap. Uh, I'm gonna have him parry until Hank decides to use sap. Of course you are. Okay, well, we lived. I 
hero doesn't need XP, it's fine. Hero does need XP. But oh, whatever. There's a grind later, um, when we're leaving the second island, where hero is gonna need to hit level 8, and it's not gonna matter until that point. Kiefer, right now, is the most important character to get that XP. So Matilda shows up, um, kills the Crabber Dabber, and turns into a monster, because she's been a monster the whole time. I don't know how old she's implied to be, but, uh, Hank says here, you must be the little sister of Rex, who we named Rexwood the town after. So her brother died and she got depressed and turned into a monster, as one does. Matilda appears. We gotta fight her or we can just run away. I'm not sure if she ever attacks you actually or if she just stands there and you beat her up, but running away is also an option. I think using the wood doll might also end the fight. Um, but yeah, we just run away and then Hank starts walking forward to kill her, but it's faster if you step forward and talk to him and stop him from doing that. Only by a few seconds, but... And she disappears here either way. Results the same, but stopping him is faster. Yeah, you can just run from it. Lost a few seconds, but it's worth it. Sitting in any position for 19 hours is uncomfortable. I had to grab a pillow from my back, but I'm already starting to feel it. Alright. People always get in my way. This guy is also in my way. Patrick says things a million. Okay. Now we're just getting debriefed. Um, and saying, hey, maybe if you go back to where you came in from there'll be a hint on how to get home, and... Turns out there's just a portal sitting there now for kinda no reason. In all subsequent islands, we will be able to immediately leave from these shard worlds. This is the only one that locks you in at the beginning. It's just, uh, for narrative purposes. <laughs> Could also see Patrick there standing at the graves. Um, and there are flowers there now. Presumably, before we beat up Matilda, um, just there were no flowers on this island. Your resurrection. Usually it doesn't point it out like that, it just doesn't. Most of the worlds that we're gonna go into are stuck in nighttime, kind of like that, with dark skies. Maybe not most, I don't actually know how many. I can think of quite a few. But then, uh, beating the monster will restore light to the world, and as we're about to find out, um, it also makes the island appear in our present day world here. Party Chat actually has a lot of lines about uh, random encounters as well. There's lines for if you change tactics, lines if somebody's low on health. There's a lot of Party Chat dialogue even inside battle. 
I think this is the only game that has party chat in battle. Um, because there's a bug that I'm gonna exploit a bit later involving party chat, and I don't think you can do it in DQ4. Alright, she shows up, or my mom's here, I show up. She says, hey, are you gonna stop running around scaring me? And I'm gonna say no, because no is faster. <laughs> Tells me my father went to the castle, so I'm gonna go to the castle. Yeah, there's all sorts of party chat dialogue on the outside of battle. Like, I read that in uh, the DQ4 PS1 translation. Oops. That there's. that a higher percentage of the script is um, party chat than anything else. Like, it's over 50% of the script, and that's why they cut it from the DS version. The English DS version, specifically. I personally have not run any of the, um, well, of this game specifically, I have not run the 3DS version, and I don't intend to because it's a much longer speedrun, but I have not done any real speedruns of any of the Nintendo DS ports of these games. Yeah. I have run through the DS version of 4 a few times, but I don't know if I'd call that a speedrun. <laughs> did it once when I was attempting to beat as many Dragon Quest IV versions in one day as possible for the release anniversary like five years ago. And uh... I've done it once I think since then um, under the context of trying to beat NES and DS at the same time with one controller using emulators. So, you know, if you want to call those speedruns. I have done a couple attempts of the PS1 version of DQ4, which is about the same as the DS version with the minor differences that do affect the run. Not here, the town. The other place Kiefer tells you to meet him, that is your secret place that nobody else knows about except Maribel. Like I commented earlier, the record for 3DS DQ7 English is like 22 hours. The record for this version English is 15 and a half. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, like they changed how the overworld works on 3DS to make them all be like it's just a bunch of areas like this stitched together. Um, and you see monsters roaming around instead of having just a big top-down overworld view. And just walking from A to B in that zone takes a lot longer because it's a lot more distance to cover. Um, also, combat is a lot slower because the monster animations, the 3D animations, are a lot slower than the 2D animations in this game. For the most part, once you get to Rexwood, I think the islands and all the plot triggers are more or less the same in the two versions. They don't make you do extra stuff. Maybe in some places, but it's not as different as the trying at the beginning. Ruins. I've been sitting here with a box of donuts. Sailing, not eating donuts, we're playing Dragon Quest Seven. I can do Alright, so the whole island's a buzz right now because there's another island up here. And wow, it immediately looks familiar. It's Rexwood. 
except it's not as run down. Talked to enough people here, you piece together that we were in Rexwood's past, and we solved the problem there, and now it appears in the present, and we can come here and get some more shards. And, um, that's basically the gist of the game for the first, I don't know, three quarters of the game. Um, all 18 of those pedestals in the shrine, the ancient fane, uh, represent islands that have been sealed away by the demon lord. We don't know about the demon lord yet, but you find out about him pretty shortly. Um, when you go back to the past, you stop the monsters from destroying the town, and then the island exists in the present. Um, so right now I'm talking to some people in here. There's an old lady in the, this house that I went into. She has a shard that her husband gave to her. You talk to her and she says, Oh, you want that dusty old thing? That shard is as useless as my husband. Why don't you take that and why don't you go tell him I said that? So <laughs> you take the shard and you go tell him that she said that. And he says, Oh man. I can't believe she didn't like my gift. I hope I got them both? No, I hope I got them both in the past then. So, yeah, and then he tells us where he found that, which is in the mine here. Which we've already been through before, but they do at least change the puzzles. This room you solve nearly identically to the past, you just do the bottom route first. But then this time you have to go around and push through here. Uh and we need this. Strawberry one. Uh and then the blueberry. We can get through. Maybe the cherry. Strawberry is usually pink. Bump the bottom one and then push through the top. Oops. Uh, this somewhere. In the top left, then the bottom left. Or you can do these two in the opposite order, whatever. Through here. <laughs> Give us access to this blue one. Push it out because it's faster than walking around. Then we push it in and we can get to the stairs. This game not 544 million hours long. It is! Run is going to be my entire day today. It started, went live at 10 o'clock my time, Eastern time. Trying to finish by 5 a.m. My estimate for this game is pretty safe, though. Uh, my PB is a little over an hour better than that estimate. But I could easily lose an hour in Dharma. You played this game casually, you understand already. Or I could first try all those bosses and, uh... Very likely beat my estimate by an hour. In which case, I hope the next runner's ready, or we're gonna be playing builders or something waiting for him to show up. Is there a death warp in here? I don't think I do. Walk out, yeah. It's gonna kill me. A cacta ball? Please. Yeah, the cacta ball is actually killing me. Fine, we got the old Montan here. Full HP plan. Probably don't need that MP later, I don't know. Yeah, well, I kinda do. I also kinda don't. Doesn't matter, the grain cycle is gonna be messed up anyway because we died to the Crabber Dabber Do. If you hear me refer to all crabs in this series as Crabber Dabber Doos, it's because of the Dragon Quest 3 Switch localization. 
Some unfortunate things happened in that game. So we got an extra shard out of there, and we're going to go into the castle to look for another. Then we'll be able to go to another island. Back to the guard, since we got the prince now, he will open the door for me. He says, Prince, you're not supposed to be out here. And says, Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll be good. I'll go back in. Don't let me catch you sneaking out again. Okay, I won't sneak out. I'll walk out the front door. I'm not really sure why there's so much security for a prince in a world that only has two towns. Where is it? There it is. So this is a cutscene like I was mentioning earlier where the ro camera rotates before the text starts. However, when you go down that staircase, it forces the camera into the wrong direction. So, I can't rotate the camera ahead of time. Yeah, the localizations on the DS version are a good percentage of why I don't speedrun any of them, but... More so than that, I just don't really want to hold a DS for the entire duration of a speedrun. I do have a modded 3DS, so I can stream off of my uh, actual system, but... Oh, I... yeah, right, talk to you first. I'm sure I talked to the guy on the left at least three times there on accident. Or realizing I was in the loop. A lot of this segment and then the next present segment are just catching people up on the stuff that we found. That old man I just talked to on the right was the one that I showed the map to at the beginning. I don't know why the other old man is down here. He's just kind of locked up in the basement with a raft. Um, and the two of them talk about not being able to find this shard that I'm about to immediately find. Oops. In this corner. You only do this twice in the game, but you break both of these pots, check the bookshelf, move it. There it is. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of dialogue in this game. Again, High Spirits used to run this game without a turbo controller, so you would just sit here mashing three buttons for the entire run. As to advanced text, I can push uh, at least triangle, I think square and um, circle all work. And I think R1 and R2 also work if you want to match those. Um, and the D-pad. So, you know, if you're mashing all of those at once, you're probably mashing at least as fast as a turbo controller, but you don't get breaks. That's a tricky one, where when you walk out of there, it moves the camera. So if you're holding up and then expect to still be facing that direction, you're going to walk right back into the room. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned this earlier, but the Japanese record is three hours faster than High Spirit's time. Not all language difference, but I'm sure at least an hour to two hours of it is. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's the standard for uh, Japanese Dragon Quest RTA to allow turbo controllers on all the RPG type games. Am I supposed to... No, that's after it, yeah. There's an item I need to get in that room that I just left. Which I don't think I can get until after Ingal, but if I forget it, then in 10 hours I'm gonna regret it. Pedestal. FMV. There's like four of those in the game. So there's two um, points in the, these plot triggers where I'm forced to use the inn and recover all my health. And because of that, in between those triggers, I'm going to grind and just spend all my magic fighting monsters. Because I'd like Kiefer to hit level 6 before I get to the boss of this island. And then after the island, I would like Hero to hit level 8 so that he learns the return spell. So yeah, since I'm going to be walking around outside and then using the end to heal anyway, it's just more efficient to do the grinding as I'm hitting all these tricks. Yeah, the Metroid Dread Turbo discussion was actually what got us talking um, in the DQ, Western DQ community, about changing our rules to allow it. And the community voted pretty strongly in favor of uh, changing the rules on the English games, though we ended up not changing Dragon Warrior 1 through 3 NES. Mostly because the people who play those games aren't in the Discord server, so... Didn't really just want to change the rules on them. <laughs> A lot of them also don't play any of the later games, so... You know, from their perspective, adding Turbo to Dragon Warrior 1 or 2 doesn't really change a lot, but... I 
don't know. I think it'd make more sense to make them fall in line with everything else. Uh... Minips. I don't know if there's anything, uh, like as far as RNG minips go, that um, Turbo helps you with in any of the games that we changed. It wouldn't help in uh, Dragon Warriors 1, 2, or 3, to my knowledge. That would be an argument, though, in. Uh, against, you know, allowing Turbo for a game, or in favor of uh, making Turbo a separate category, though, if it allowed you to do something that you could not do without the Turbo controller. You might argue that Turbo makes the RNG minip I'm going to do later easier, but it's certainly possible without a Turbo controller. I think I was supposed to play some coin. Minutes while I talk to her and figure. My nerves. Kind of would have figured. I probably don't have enough money for it. I usually don't. And we can buy six herbs or seven herbs. That's like nine herbs, but it's a little less. I didn't buy this copper sword earlier, <laughs> that's why I have so much money. Excuse me for a minute. Supposed to buy that in Rexwood present. And I was supposed to the club. Agility speed. Uh, I'll just continue. Uh, Mystic. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Now, all the Mystic Nuts and Agility Seeds are going on uh, Gabo. Kiefer is going to be doing for the rest of his time in our party. Oh, Maribel learned sap that refills your magic. Alright. I didn't comment on this earlier when um, I beat the golem, but your magic does refill after you learn a spell on level up. So it's not every level up where your magic refills, but specifically if you learn a spell. Keeper for a couple turns. You 
Reaper's AI for some reason decided to hit the Flora J turn one and then the Cat Mage turn two. Okay, that's all we got. hour estimate. That is a long one. And it really just is that that's how much content there is in this game. I already mentioned those 18 pedestals are 18 islands like this one that we have to run through. Anyway, on this island we're uh, about to participate in the Festival of Faux Flame. Big volcano, we saw a vision of it erupting when we started, uh, when we entered the island. So we're hoping that doesn't happen. But everyone in town is about to go up to the top of the volcano and throw torches into the volcano to appease the god of flame. Fire spirit, I don't know what they call him. Fire spirit later. So. Oh. The Elder is excited that there are some travelers here to show up for his festival this year. We walk up to him and says, Oh man, you guys don't have your torches. Hey, somebody somebody get these guys some torches. It's time to be in the procession of fire. This is about a long but see, This is the longest break you get in the run so far. Only thanks to Turbo. If it weren't for Turbo, you wouldn't have much time here at all. basic flow of this game is, you know, you start out on starting island, um, I need to fight this, I need more XP. And then you go through all 18 of those islands in the ruin, and then there's a boss, and then you do, like, basically three more islands afterward. They're all revisits, but you've got about as much stuff to do on each one of them as you do here, so... About close to 25 uh, sub stories you have to work your way through, and that's why it takes 15 plus hours to finish the game. <laughs> so my estimate's 19 hours because my PB is like, I think, a high 17. I think it's 1740 something. Which that's JRT ti A timing, the JRTA timing. Just power on all the way through the credits. On speedrun.com, um, you actually start timing when you gain control of the hero and you stop timing when you kill the final boss. So it's like 20 minutes shorter than JRTA timing. But I just time it both ways because I figure I'm gonna watch the credits anyway. Which I guess is another thing to consider uh, when I talk about how much faster the Japanese record is. The Japanese record uses JRTA timing, so it includes the 20 minutes of credits at the end. It's still 3 minutes faster than Ice Spirits, or 3 hours faster, sorry. Alright. Threw the torches in. I'm gonna talk to Pamela back here. But Pamela is the only one that believes us that we saw a vision of the volcano exploding. Is she's gonna let us in the back here so that we can investigate if anything's going on down at the bottom. 
Because in our vision, we saw the volcano erupt after somebody threw a torch into it. And right now, people are throwing torches into it, so we do not have much time to lose. <laughs> um, and in fact, the volcano will erupt if you spend too much time in this dungeon. It's based on how many staircases you take and doorways you step through. You'll see next time I step on a staircase, I believe. Nope, one more. Um, next staircase I hit, somebody will throw a torch into the volcano. And if that happens, I don't know how many times, but it's about ten times. The volcano erupts. And you don't game over, you just go back to town. Like you would if you party wiped in here. It turns out that this whole thing in the volcano was a bad dream you were having. You just wake up in the inn, and it's time for the festival again. There's a tile in here where I, that I can step on to recover all my health and magic. So as long as nobody dies, play this stuff. And I do want Kiefer to level up one more time before the boss. But I'm gonna be a little picky about which enemies I do fight because there's a, an imp-looking enemy in here that does a lot of damage when he attacks. Sort of ruse, their jump attacks do quite a bit of damage, but the imps do like three or four more than they do. Arbo learned Retaliate. Retaliate is a funny skill. Um, basically, when you're using it, you counter and copy any attack you get hit with. I'll use that in a couple of the boss fights coming up, but uh, it's never really, like, important. Just, like, when she has nothing better to do, she could parry or she could retaliate. Plus two. Buy on it, cool. Um, the random amounts for seeds are different in this game than most of the series. Um, all of the seeds like uh, that aren't HP or MP, to my knowledge, they can only roll one or two. Um, HP seeds, I think, are three or four. Um, and then magic, I'm not positive what the full range is. Maybe it's still three to five. In most of the other games, though, all of those other seeds can roll one higher than that. They're one to three, or life nuts are four to six. Nice, right? I don't have my level, so I'm gonna grab the chests before I step on the glowing light. Money. They're cool, still get a fight. Found any imps yet? Mm -hmm. I need to go there. Up on the tile, whether I get the level or not. Who is it? Hero. And keep it. Okay, that's good. He forgets a lot of health there, and also three strength. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna fight a big ol' head. Old man's gonna throw a torch in. Old man's the second to last person. Hmm. 
I'm not sure if that's always an old man or if you were to like waste enough time if that would actually set off the eruption here. Mirabelle's gonna cast this out from this dude. This is kind of going to be our strategy for the next couple boss fights, is Mirabelle casting Sap. Fire Breath doesn't do anything, I'm not worried about that. Really safe here at the start of the fight. Gonna get a little more aggressive as we go. Just gonna build up power. So I'm gonna have these two parry. Sap will wear off after a few turns. Just wear off. And really, more off then. Build, building up power again. So I'm parry. a really straightforward fight you just have to watch your health um he has an attack that i don't think he used where he just attacks your whole party he does a little more damage than his fire breath um and it's just like the real only difficulty in the fight would be if he does something like that and lowers your hp a little bit and you know you have to kind of waver on whether or not to heal and then you decide not to heal and then he does it again and now your whole team's at half health and they all need healed so Probably my favorite thing about this run is the bosses. A lot of them are not difficult to survive, they're just difficult to fight quickly because there's always a lot of room for getting more aggressive, but if you get more aggressive then you're being riskier, you're more likely to die. So the more you fight them all, the more you kind of learn where that line is, where you should be on your level of aggression. Yeah. Alright, Wiggleheads. Burn down there, exploded. Can I? Thanks. Uh, holy water? On the back today. There it is. Because I used two reserves, that's why. Bag. Raise stats at level up on a curve. Um, no, all stat level ups are fixed. So it does not, like, um, it's not like DQ3 and Dragon Warrior 4, where if you boost all your stats up with seeds, you'll get fewer stats when you level up. Um, every level you always get the same number. No randomness to it and no, uh, correction. That lady in the dress is the last person to throw the torch in before the volcano erupts in the vision that we saw. So, that's why it makes a special effort there to show her throwing hers in. It's kind of funny, because everybody's like, Oh boy, we're all saved, let's all get out of here. And she's still holding her torch and she's like, I I guess I'll still toss this in. Alright. Jump shot. Yeah. Okay. All the club.
Helmet. Kiefer. Hero, puppet. Use the string seed on Kiefer. Big one. <laughs> You're gonna see a lot of ones on seeds because again, it's only one or two are the options. Okay. So now we're gonna grind for about 15 minutes. Get hero a high enough level to learn return, which is our fast travel spell. Um, we're not even really going to be able to use it until halfway through the next segment, but they have so much time having it that this is the right point to grind for it. Oh, um, the first time you walk out of town, there are no encounters on the world map. <laughs> you got to walk back in to get them back. Kind of silly. didn't kill him. They should. They did. Now Kiefer's gonna waste his entire fire slash, finishing that off. That one had high HP too. Okay, well. During this grind, I'm probably going to have to use the end at least twice, um, but I can also be mindful that when Maribel hits level 7, she will learn sleep, which refills her magic. So I can be mindful of that, and if I know Maribel is about to hit 7. Get 6 before Hero hits it? Maybe that's normal. Um, yeah, I guess she is ahead of him at this point. Yeah, I could potentially skip an in trip if uh, I know she's about to level up. because there were two sword of -roos. Keeper didn't even hit the one that Maribel hit. Oh my god. Now this is a dangerous fight. Yeah, it definitely can take 100 hours casually. We're gonna try to beat it in 18 to 19. Level there too. That's a win. Hero's magic refill because he learned upper. Ah, well. I'll just revive Maribel and I won't use the inn and I'll see if she'll hit 7 before I need to kill her. Almost the same fight. Mm -hmm. 
Find it, everybody. I think the sandstorm only lasts a couple of turns, but it's still annoying. Why we're going in for the floor chain. I don't know why Kiefer changed his mind after Maribel hit the board game. Wrong about Tans are gonna last one and a couple turns. with one of the dumbest names in the series and tagged me. Ants is a good pick. You can really rarely see it though because of how hard it is to get in most games kind of a bonus spell. Even playing DQ3 casually, you're probably going to beat the game before you unlock it. Oops. The first tongue rat we've seen on this island. There's only like four enemies on this island. Fight is a good spell, I like that one. Magic usually has a really good animation with it. I might pick that. But, uh, conventionally, it's not a very efficient spell. I don't know when I would ever use Mega Magic, just because running out of MP is so inconvenient. Unless you're routing out a speedrun and you've got Elf Water on deck. Blindness. Maribel is soloing all these fights. He's the only one who can deal to I don't want to spend more magic on I don't want to start a fight with 2 MP. 
You actually don't get my kill in this run. You kind of do, but you don't. I get a sword that casts it when I use the sword, but I... may not ever do that. You only have the sword for the final boss, but sometimes I use it in the first phase of the final boss. Hey! Maribel did learn sleep while I was in a good spot with Hero, so that does save me going to the end. The sleep is also good in battle here, um, if I can find monsters that are actually in groups. I think it's 100% to work on any enemy in this zone. But it targets a group, so if there's only one enemy in the group, I'm not going to use it. But if I find a group of two or three foresters, I'm definitely casting Sleep instead of Blaze. We can't make it. Hmm. Turbo through this, I don't think casting Blaze is going to kill these things any faster. Last year on PS1? Nice. Well, they made a 3DS remake, but um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend either one over the other. I think both versions of the game are good and there's reasons to play both of them. Oh, that was two groups. Didn't notice until it was too late. Hero and Maribel still can't team up to kill a cat mage. Alright. He cast Blaze, they probably would. Seven. One more level to go. Bird Ruse. Notice if Kiefer is like certain that he's gonna get the kill that he doesn't even use Fire Slash. It's kind of nice because it's a slightly faster animation to just bonk it with the mallet. isn't on mobile, is it? Nine isn't either. Or, of course, eleven. And one through six all are, and they're basically the same as the DS ports. And eight also has an Android release. I have not heard of many people playing DQ8 on the Android release, though. I don't know how good or bad it is. I remember I got it for free at some point, because there was a point where it was like free in the Amazon App Store. I bought it, but it was like a 2 gig download, so I don't know if I ever even downloaded it. At the time, my phone had probably like 8 gigs of space on it. 
was five or six years ago. Back when Amazon had a phone. on a magic too, so we'll go to the end. I think seven's hit or miss just because of its length, right? Because if you get like three or four islands into this game and you're not enjoying yourself, it's not going to get better for you. <laughs> and you're only a quarter of the way through the game. Um... The beginning of this game is pretty honest about what the entire game is going to be. But on the other side, if you play the first three or four islands and you really enjoy them, you've got a lot more game to enjoy ahead of you. So, again, just depending on whether you love it or hate it, I think the length either works in its favor or against. I think this game and DQ6 as well are only as grindy as you make it. Because with the class system, like, you can grind forever and try to get, you know, every skill on every character. But you can beat the game just going through, like, two or three classes casually. If you know what you're doing, if you're not, if you're just throwing together basic classes and trying to guess at how to unlock the more advanced classes. That could require a lot more grinding. I know this game has hints on how to unlock the combined classes. Or maybe it outright tells you. I don't know about DQ6. But certainly in this game, um, class levels ladder, matter a lot more than experience levels. So if you are grinding out, you know, useless classes like some of the monster classes that don't give you anything, then you're gonna be grinding quite a lot. I'm just gonna sleep the Forester so he doesn't sandstorm us. And keep freezing the night door. Thanks. And for the final boss of this game, like, there's a couple of skills that if you have them, it makes the fight a lot easier. And if you don't have them, it's gonna be real rough. So yeah. Go up. Like area healing, for example. If you got to him and you didn't have any area healing, you would be in trouble. It's unreasonable to expect the player to have area healing by the time they get there though because there is at least one healer heart that you get in a treasure chest in a room that you're required to be in but if you made somebody a heal slime and maxed out the class you would have heal all and heal us on at least one person That person were Mirabel. Might not be in your final team. Really, that's the most. I bet most people would probably make Mirabel their healer. In the speed run, it's gonna be Gabo, because Gabo has the most agility. But who's gonna put spell classes on Gabo, right? Oops. Here. 
I don't know if I've ever gotten hero class in this game. I know how to get it, I've just never grinded that high. I've also never completed the post game though. Beefer's probably still gonna fire slash his sort of room, but whatever. Oh no, he didn't. In my 3DS playthrough, all I used was monster classes, and I was not able to beat the uh, first bonus dungeon boss with that setup. Heal a spell was just not enough. And I didn't really have any good damage moves. I think White Fire was my main damage move, and I, he probably resists it. Ooh, cloth armor. Great. Uh, hero's gotta be up, oh, getting close. I was gonna say, it's probably about time to heal and then go toward the portal. But she's out of magic, so it is indeed that time. Reminded me to grab the Rainbow Dew. Magic out and get in this last level. Just gonna blaze. These guys don't do much damage. And we are in. And all she did is look at me. Oh, there's Hero's level, right? Turn spell. All right. Out of here. Bad. Yeah, if you're not willing to look stuff up when you get stuck, I do recommend the 3DS port. Because it's uh, a lot easier to find the shards. 3DS port. Because there's basically... Oops. Um, on your touch screen at all times, there's an indicator that there is a shard near you. So you can't just, you know, walk past it and miss it. Because it's not necessarily the case that each shard you pick up takes you to the next island, right? Like right now I've got, um, I don't actually know what shards I have on me right now, but I'm pretty sure I'm about to pick up wind and water shards. But I'm going to the water zone, so I could miss the wind shard and not realize it. And then when it's time to go to the next zone, I don't know, did I... You know, just miss something, or did I miss it in, uh... I know, Kiefer. Um... But yeah, basically, the entire previous 
game behind me to have those shards in it. And when you get to the middle of the game, you're missing an item. Now it could be anywhere in the game up to that point. And there is a fortune teller in this game that points to um, like the general area where you're missing a shard, but she's really out of the way. The 3DS also moves that functionality to a more obvious location. Puts it in an NPC in the ruin instead of having to go to Fall Rod. I think it's present Fall Rod though, so you could at least return to it. absolutely forbid you to go on a dangerous journey. Your dad has such a big head. Alright. So the adults finally decided to talk to us and decided we can't go save the world because we're children and a girl. Dad doesn't care though, he says I can keep at it. Whatever. At least I've got cool parents. Prince Kiefer and Maribel have been forbidden to come with me. So naturally they're going to anyway. Maribel nagged her dad until he said, fine, get out of here. Not gonna miss this nagging. Oh, we got an ambulance. Probably a fire truck right behind it that I'll have to meet for as well. So now it's just me and Maribel off on an adventure. Fantastic, great, wonderful. But Maribel, still being a girl, cannot lift the stone lid. Thanks, early 2000s. Let's go find a princely man to help me lift that up. You would think we'd have like a crowbar or something in that cave so it'd be easier to move that lid. But we don't. Or just leave the lid off. Who cares? I'm gonna find it. I don't know. You can actually walk past this pot without throwing it, it's just kinda tricky. Generally faster just to pick it up and throw it. A task would probably just walk past it like... Hey, that'd be a fun way to spend like eight years of your life making a task of this game. Yeah, hey, yeah, get on the boat. There we go. I didn't really mention where this boat came from, but Kiefer mentions that you and the... You and Kiefer have been restoring it over the last few years. Return gets blocked a lot by story triggers, and you also can't use it in the past. That's the first point in the run where I'm able to cast it. Okay. All I'm getting out of here is this potion. I will uh, likely have that when I go into the final boss. But if Evil Mech or Cavemon are rude to me, 
I may use it in those fights as well. Only if things go wrong, though. Very much a safety pickup. Bring <laughs> Gordon Freeman. Gordon Freeman can do Couple chests we want to get out of the volcano. Right here. Third is one of the two important ones. of the way up to the top. Oh no. Up on this one just to encounter cancel. I haven't described how random encounters work in this game yet, but um, like most of the games that came out, or, or Dragon Quest games that came out around the same time as this one, there's just a counter in the background that starts at a random value and every step you take it goes down and when it reaches zero you get into a fight. Um, but that counter is reset whenever you take a staircase, walk through certain, some doors. Uh, I, I went the wrong way, didn't I? You think about it. No, I need to go this way. Um. So yeah, sometimes you'll see me step on a staircase that I don't need to go down, just go back up, and I'll probably say that I'm resetting the encounter rate. That's what I mean by that. This is Here. Guess this pedestal only needs one shard, doesn't it? Okay, this town is just triggers. Everyone in here has been turned to stone. First you inspect the statues and it's like, wow, they carved all these statues. And Maribel's like, oh, what if these are people that turned to stone? And she's actually right. We talked to the one person who is not a statue. He kind of just is depressed and tells you to leave. And says, if you go to the inn, um, do not go outside at night that even though it looks dark right now, it's actually daytime, and it gets darker. He gives us this item, which is a bottle of water that is supposed to cure the petrification, but he says that it doesn't work on these people because it took him so long to get it that the stone started wearing away from the elements, and it just, they can't be brought back anymore. So that's great, but we've got this angel tier. You can try to use it on the statues and it just doesn't work. So for now we're just gonna go to bed. I'm actually not sure if you try to use it or if you just, if it tells you you have to be up high to use it. I know in the second town where you use the item that is the case. But most of the statues, you can inspect them at night and um, they give you a flashback.
Alright, and in that first flashback there, we saw that what happened to everyone in town is this cursed rain started falling. They call it Grey Rain. And, uh, just everyone it touched turned to stone. And then I went in and I inspected a bookshelf and it mentioned something about a secret hideout. Find out more about that here in a second. <clears throat> Here's a child. I can't think of his name right now. Joseph, that sounds right. He's writing instructions there and when I was walking around, you could actually see his instructions were written on the wall, but he's, uh... Telling Rena here that he found a second secret hideout. I think I found... I think the bookcase gave me instructions to his first secret hideout. But... What are these secret hideouts? Find out in just a moment, but first we got two more people to talk to. That you hear is gonna give us one last flashback. <clears throat> well, one last required flashback. So, Clayman and Millie here are a couple. Clayman is about to leave to run some errands. So he's gotta go out and get supplies for the town. Millie's worried about him, and he says, ah, don't worry about it, and then, uh... Oh yeah, there's something about a rain prayer, too. I guess this is a farming town, and they've been praying for rain, and what they get is the gray rain, which turns everyone to stone, kind of ironically. Um, we'll find out what actually causes the gray rain a bit later, but... That's all we get about it right now. We talk to this old man. He reveals that he is Clayman. Um, that he left for to run errands. And then the curse happened. And everyone turned to stone. And when he got back, it was too late. Everybody else was already petrified. And so then he left on his journey to find the angel tear. But it took him too long to find it. There's nothing he could do by the time he got back. So... Now that we've got all the story, I'm gonna go back to the end, get our team back together. We're gonna go look for these secret hideouts. Because looking around town, there wasn't anybody in any of the houses. But maybe if somebody were protected from the elements, the angel tier would work on them. So, I believe this is secret base number two, not that it matters at all. But we go through here, takes us up to this high point here, the rock that they were praying around. Why does Maribel have it? And I'm just gonna scatter it. Clears up the sky, it does not cure any of their petrification, but out of secret hideout number one, Joseph pops out. So somebody did survive after all. Layman was just too afraid to try what we just tried because he didn't want to waste the angel tear and he just figured it was too late that everybody was too far gone to bring back. But it turns out, he did save someone after all. That is also an interesting point. The very first time uh, Layman got back and found out everyone was petrified, he could have dragged them all inside. I actually hadn't thought of that. <laughs> but he didn't. <laughs> Joseph joins the party. This is one of a few NPCs in this game where the little jingle it plays takes longer to play out than the character will actually spend in our party. I don't read the writing on the notice. Okay, secret base number one, I was correct. Okay, we'll 
I'll go back over here to Clayman. So he kind of notices that the sky is a little brighter now, but he's like, Oh no, I'm just old. It's not actually... He didn't actually... Wait a minute. I recognize that child. That's Joseph. So... He thanks us. They decide to go off on an adventure to warn other towns about the Grey Rain. And we are going to find one more later where the Grey Rain causes some conflict. This is one of the towns we do the worst job of saving, but that is all that we need to do here. Or wait, no. Walk out the front and cast return. Yeah, have return now. I don't have to walk through that horrible path ever again. Till disc two. Uh, fish bump. This is a very quick present segment. <clears throat> this is also one of, I believe, two towns that does not exist in the present. It's actually the Immigrant Town, which is a, primarily a feature of this game. They also added it to DQ4's remakes, but basically if you talk to that old man, you'll start the Immigrant Town quest and then you'll be able to find um, NPCs in other towns that will join you. Northwest. Okay. This. I got there eventually. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, the town building quest in this game is actually kind of annoying if you don't know how it works and like look up a guide because the more people you recruit the bigger the town gets but the final stage of the town is different depending on the composition of the townspeople that you recruited so if you recruit a lot of farmers it becomes a big farm if you recruit a lot of bunny girls it uh, becomes the grand slum where the final casino is And uh, if you're hunting tiny metals, I think three of the final stages of the town have tiny metals in them. So you have to recruit the right people, kick them out, recruit again, <laughs> then do that one more time. I don't actually know how many tiny metals are in the game versus how many uh, it takes to get the final reward though, so you could probably get away with not having them all. Okay. Also, the act of recruiting the NPCs is kind of just a grind, too. You just... You find a spot where somebody can appear, then you enter and exit the room over and over until you find the person you want. You talk to them, and then I think you have to save and reset the game to get another person to appear there. The DS version changed how the immigrant town works almost completely, though. Um, you have to recruit specific people, and it's kind of more fun, honestly. Oh, I forgot the magic. Because, uh, like, um, every time you recruit somebody, they'll tell you, Oh, I met somebody in an area, and they'll describe the area, and they might be interested in joining too. So then you just kind of keep an eye out for when you find the area they described. And yeah, this is a huge game. And one of the three people who have completed an RTA of this version of the game. <laughs> to my knowledge.
college anyway. Thumbed it down too much? Yeah, that's possible too. I believe the 3DS version also only has one final version of the town. Which simplifies it a lot. That's kind of how DQ4's town building works though. There's only one final version of the town in DQ4 as well. Um, if you're not familiar where that is, it's the bazaar from Chapter 2. If you go there in Chapter 5... Uh, Oh, I need to tidy first. Uh, oh, Maribel. Tidy all. Everything that's not equipped in the bag, including a bunch of junk. Uh, uh, home mount. Just supposed to be four herbs first. A bunch of junk key items that will just be in my way. Uh, it was supposed to be five. Then eight of these, and then one of them's gonna go to the bag. Um, and I'm gonna buy an extra sticker. Okay. I can find the door. Well, at the beginning of the game, we were on just one island, but at the moment, there are three. Every time I go in back in time and solve a problem, a new island appears in the present, and we're slowly reassembling the world map. Alright, so what's going on in this town? We show up here, and none of the people will talk to us for some reason. Um, but there's a bunch of animals in town, so we go to find this woodsman who has the ability to talk to animals. Um, and our intention is to have him talk to the animals of the town and figure out what happens. But if you try to talk to the animals, he discovers that he can't talk to them. Which is not something he's encountered before. Um, but then if you try to talk to the people, it turns out the woodsman can talk to the people. Because this old man isn't a human. He looks like a human, but he's actually a horse. So, the... Animals have all been turned into people, and the people have all been turned into animals by a curse. So, we're going around talking to the people who are actually animals to get the story out of them. We're finding out that there were, um, there's a monster that's been kind of plaguing the town, and the white wolves used to defend the town from him, but, uh... They've been mostly wiped out. There's only one left. We eventually find out that... Uh... No, not you. The cat. Uh, that the child that's chained up in the shed in the northeast corner of the town is the last white wolf. Oh! Whoops. I said yes. You know, he's gonna sum up the whole story for me. <laughs> That's probably like a 20 second time loss saying yes there. Yes, I understand. Thank you. Did he repeat it? He asked me the double question? Did I get all that? Yes. A quick study, that's DQRTA for you. And maybe he didn't repeat, maybe he just kept going. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> woodsman is best guess in PC. Yeah, my favorite is when the woodsman uses an herb on himself when he himself is full on HP because he has 65,000 HP. Why would he ever need to herb himself? That's all he does, too. He does absolutely no damage in battle. Okay. But if you ever see all three of my characters at not full HP, but he uses an herb and it doesn't do anything, 
And you know that he just tried to heal himself. Even though he is sitting at 65,535 HP. You agree that you don't want me to not repeat that? I don't, I don't know how to answer that. Can he actually die? That is a good question. I think so. I've never gotten it to happen. I don't remember if I ever tried editing his HP in an emulator. I know say that I can put monsters to sleep in here, but I didn't note which ones. That would have been a good one to try on, because they hit real hard. This one is actually the only monster that my notes call out as being sleepable. I kind of feel like I should fight him if Kiefer can just fire slash him like that. Pretty much anything. That's probably true. It's very early in the game. That was really early, too. I'll probably get another fight before I get back to that door. I get one right, or is it... Yeah, yeah. Present where that's a tiny metal. Thank you, open all the chests in the past. Only skip that one in the present. So the door that was sealing the monster away is open. Don't worry about it in a second though. Just gonna casually walk straight past this treasure chest on accident. And inside this cave you cannot use magic, so I'm gonna heal right here. Before I go in. the copper sword on you still, I tidied. Couple of things out of here. Runs up to check on this wolf. Run down here, and that's gonna trigger the boss fight. Hemp juggler time. This is Death Pal. Is a pretty literal translation. His Japanese name is Death Amigo. Ow. 
point. Nice. And the blurb. Repellents, as you can see, deal about 10 damage in battle if you throw them. And that's the case in most Dragon Quest games, actually. Yeah. He's only got 520 HP, so throw in seven of these at him. Good. Helps me get through his health a little faster. And she can't cast plays in this fight because spells are sealed. Also, our first boss that randomly oops takes either one or two actions in combat, um, and that's going to be pretty much most of the bosses for the rest of the game. I think Herbsman just healed himself, by the way. Herbsman, Woodsman, Herbsman is actually a good name for him. See, he tried to attack there and did zero damage. Having Maribel retaliate, because if this guy hits Maribel with Wind Beast or the Dazzle, she can reflect it. As long as she survives it in the case of Wind Beast. I think Wind Beast hits him for like 30 damage though, it's pretty nice. Dodges. Last herb. Healed himself, thank you. Good. I'm glad. It'd be terrible if you would die on us, woodsman. There we go. Blind too now. And he's dead. Very blind. The blind only lasts one or two turns. Um, I think it's a 50-50 chance of it wearing off after the first turn versus the second. But it gives Maribel something to do to try to retaliate it. This is kind of a funny text prompt here. Where I have to go over to him. And then I have to push to the right to close the lid. And he's sealed away again. With them sealed away, the village returns to normal. Guy clears up, it's sunny again. <clears throat> but right before we sealed him away, he threw an extra spell at Gabo here to ensure that he does not turn back into a wolf. But all you can say is Gabo right now. But we'll call him Gabo.
Não. It's already starting to feel a little sore from talking for three hours, but I'm sure I can make it another 60. No, I cannot squeeze out the back. Great. Put it over here. Right. I don't know if there are counters on the map in this part or not, so I'll pull you to that movement. The reason I walked over to the left there every time that I walked from the town to the portal is because. Um, if you're familiar with a lot of older Dragon Quests and Final Fantasies do it too, where they've got the world map broken into a grid where in each square in the grid it has a different set of monsters you encounter, right? And if you, in this game, when you cross over those lines, it resets your encounter threat. So when I walked over to the left as far as I did, that uh, reset my chance of finding a random encounter. And you're not very likely to get an encounter on the way to Orph anyway, but I think that doing that movement reduces it to near zero. But there's a lot of points in this run where I'm going to take a pretty long walk on the overworld and not find monsters just because I cross over one or more of those lines. Walking to Cave Mons Cave from Verdham is a point where I think you walk over two of those lines. Gambo has joined the party. Alright. So now we've got four party members. And we will have four party members for a while. Next three or four islands. If he leaves. Too far north or too far south? There it is. Ah! Uh, we go back to Orf here in the present. Find that everybody's animals again. But if you talk to enough people, you find out that it's actually people in costumes. Why am I talking to the horse? Very clearly facing the treasure chest, attempting to open it, and somehow I'm talking to the horse. Animals, my dog is in front of me and he's gonna trip over the board. That's cool. Are you going or not? It's right. Okay, so back into Death Palace Cave. Yeah, they basically um, embraced their history there of Death Pal turning them into animals. They've turned it into a festival where every year they all dress up like animals. And parade around and I don't know. You can get something for uh, something in that town, but I don't remember what it is. It might be the monster manual. You answer some quiz questions or do a mini game or something. I think you have to identify, like, in a circle of animals, which one is actually the people. Monster Manual? Okay. Not sure about this game, but I know in uh, the DS games, and I guess PS1, DQ4 as well. No, I already said not to open that. Uh, you can use the Monster Manual to skip encounters. You can open it up to reset your encounter chance. I think it might only work on the overworld, though, in DQ4. So I don't know how useful that would be in this game. If it works the same. Because um, another thing you can do to reset your encounter threat is to get on and off the boat. It's actually very easy to just not get overworld encounters in this game. 
Another lone goopy. This is exactly where I found a lone goopy in that game. I'm gonna say, I should actually probably fight this one. I to get Gabo level 2. They both went to sleep. Gabo doesn't need to hit level 2 or 3 before the next boss fight, but having him with a little extra HP helps him. Because at 47 HP, if the next boss hits him twice, he'll die. I have to take manual control of him and parry if he gets hit once. Real time attack just means basically that the timer is never paused from when I start doing the run to when I end. It's your normal speedrun rules. Really, I'm just trying to encounter I don't want to fight these monkeys. I'm kill Kiefer, aren't they? Don't kill Hero. Come on, you don't all have to take turns. Alright. Revive him somewhere. I don't know where. I don't think I could revive him in Orf because the priest is a cosplaying. Alright. So we come in here and for some reason we lift the lid off of Death Pal's prison. It warns you three times not to do this, but it ends up not being a bad idea. He's fine. He's much more chill than he was before. He's had some time to think about what he did. Now he just kind of wants to, you know, be left alone. Yeah, that's another distinction too, it's not using the in-game timer. When I save my game, it'll tell me how much in-game time I have, um... But, you know, with these older consoles that don't really have CPU clocks in them, those are pretty inaccurate. Plus, there's games where certain things aren't timed, like cutscenes and junk. But... Yeah, for RTA, you're using an external timer, real time, and, uh... You don't pause the timer and, like, you know, get up for breaks. This... Is the counter rate for each map? Um... Uh, I'll go to Rex. Revive there. Where am I going next? Falrod? Actually, I can revive in Falrod. We'll just do that. If you're talking about, like, uh... I might reach that north. I'm basically skipping like half an encounter each time it happens. It's not really a huge deal, and in a lot of places it's more for safety than for time. <clears throat> but getting into a fight and running like second try probably costs you 20 seconds. So if you minimize the number of fights that you're just going to run from anyway, it's definitely for the better for multiple reasons. I didn't get a fight after walking that far out of my way on accident. <laughs> Drink seed here. Guard. Cheap one. Here. Five. Thank you. 
This town's pretty sad. It gets attacked by robots later and the nun on our left dies. And if you come in here and talk to the priest at any time after that happens, he comments on having to bury her later. And her coffin's sitting, like, right next to him. He's like, he's not having a good... Real quick, I'm gonna look around for somebody that I don't think is in here. Okay. There's a soldier later that's wearing a different set of armor and I don't know where he comes from. He's not in this town. Yeah. Got DQ6 armor on and nobody in this town has DQ6 armor. to re-equip it, but I barely attack with her. Okay. Eat herbs. Arabelle. Two eat herbs for... Back for the bag. Agility seed, but I don't. Off these, but no. Oh, that did put up good. Alright. You order two. Complicated menu so far. Where I missed an ability seed. Probably gonna die to Orgo Demir 2 2 now. But that's fine. We'll just roll high on the other ones. That'll be fine.
be very good. Let's just say the chain. I don't know how much. So you can only heal twice. of the run. Yeah, this, uh, the final boss of this island is the first one that's significantly likely to kill me. I'm gonna take him safe, though. I think, uh, with the strategy I use on him, the backup strategy, I'm unlikely to wipe to him. But we'll see. The estimate on this run is 19 hours. I'm hoping for closer to 18, but we'll see what happens in Dharma. If Dharma goes smoothly, I'm gonna have to DM the next runner and ask him how early he plans on being around. Probably just talked to that guy like three times that more than I needed to and didn't notice. Ephra's inventory is supposed to be full right now. I feel like it is. Maybe I was supposed to buy a bunch of herbs for him. So that this goes in his inventory. Or in heroes instead of Kiefer's. to vote. It's that too. This game was, what, 2001? I think. Well, the, pretty much the entire story of this island is that it's under attack by robots. Later on we'll find out that, uh, there's somebody in the cave off to the east who's controlling the robots and possibly creating them as well. But at the moment, we're just kind of joining the army to help defend the town. Hey, Purple Mario. Thanks for the GLHF. That guts is the next round, not this one. Alright, nobody knows how to defeat the robots. We're gonna go around the, t the room and talk to everybody. I'm talking to the guy across the table right now. Talk to him. Just fighting hard. Fighter there suggests turning the robots off. Which sounds stupid, but it's actually what we end up doing. <laughs> he thinks it's a suicide mission.
Capo just says he doesn't understand. Now the boss of this island is a bit of a difficulty spike. For how long this game is, it still has quite a few difficulty spikes in it. This boss, um, the next island's boss, and then two islands after that, Dharma, are all pretty big difficulty spikes. Needed to talk to one guy, didn't I? Just following that guy out of the room. <sighs> I don't know why this guy has a name. I don't know if he's like lieutenant around here. But he's just Haynes, I guess. Nineteen hour estimate. Kind of described the my history with this earlier, but I learned started learning this game in December of last year. My first run was like two months after that, and uh, I've only completed about four full runs, I think. Grab this. So my time's not great, but I also didn't ever plan on you know seriously grinding out a. 15 plus an hour game. I got the time I was looking for, which was a sub 18 hour, and just decided we'll, we'll run it in the marathon and then we'll call. Not you. Oh wait, that was the right person. Oh wait, no, they just both asked the same question. <laughs> okay, whatever. I talked to the guy across the table first, and I, I was thought, oh, that's the wrong guy, but he said exactly what I expected the person I needed to talk to to say. And apparently both of those people say, oh, did you talk to the guy? Did he help? Yes, no. But it only progresses if you talk to the guy that's above me. Talking to people diagonally across tables works really strangely, and I have a lot of trouble with it in Deja when the tables are round. In fact, usually I just walk around the table in that chapter and just talk to them, because otherwise I talk to the wrong person six times. Hey, Aaron. find large enough blocks of time, yeah. yeah it, it takes up the entire day of whichever day you choose. So this guy on the left in the different armor, that's the guy I was talking about. I don't know where he came from. He claims to have come from the city to the east, but nobody there was wearing that armor. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess they just wanted him to look different so that you could tell he wasn't one of the soldiers from around here. But it's just, just strange that he's wearing completely different armor from everybody else in the city. <laughs> now the 3DS version, I think only two runs have ever been completed on 3DS. High Spirits completed one and Purple Mario completed one, and between the two of them their best time is like 22 hours. Which is 7 hours slower than High Spirits PlayStation PB. You could do one and a half runs of the PlayStation version in the time it takes to finish DS because it's just such a slower pace. So the lore update on this island, we're talking to this guy because he knows some things about robots. He likes to take them apart and tinker with them. So we're asking him if he knows of any weaknesses of the robots. 
And I forget what the history is between these two characters. They're brothers, but they hate each other for some reason. Um, but uh, Zebit here just kind of... You know, he's kind of on the side of the robots. He doesn't really care if the robots kill all the people. <laughs> we ask him for help and he refuses. Then we come outside and this robot's just kind of fiddling around. He dies for some reason. Then he walks out and says, Hey, get off my lawn. Wait a minute. There's a robot. And he gets excited about the robot. Now they're gonna just pick out this robot. See what makes it tick. We're gonna go back to the castle. But the castle's under attack. We healed up, we're healed. Okay, so the mech soldier. Put Gabo on manual. Mech. Park. Um. Uh, Alright. So Gabo is real scary. Um. These robots see him barking and they lose a turn. They're afraid. I guess. Yeah, the sword dance is harder to get in the DS version, and that's part of why it's slower. I think the main thing that slows DS down, though, is, like I mentioned earlier, just um, walking on the overworld is much slower because they made the overworld much, much bigger, and also combat moves a lot slower. The battle animations are a lot slower. Yeah, he does give up pretty quickly. Alright, those two robots are down. Three more robots walk up. I'm ready to fight these guys, but we end up not having to. So he says he's reprogrammed this robot. Now oh, it's nice. And it also um, can spit out this radio frequency that disrupts the signal it's getting from the cave over in the east. Um, rather, the signal that all these other robots are receiving. So, yeah, now they're not able to attack because they can't get their orders. So they, the rest of the robots all get trashed off screen. You sleep on the floor in the throne room. This castle has three floors to it. I think I'm confusing it with Estard. I don't know why. in an office knows that this is a pain. Uh, not you. Well, um, hey, ready for a meeting? Go back over here. You say, hey, they're ready for the meeting. 
We go back over here. We have the meeting. Kiefer's in front because he's the most durable. Um, in most or all of the Dragon Quest games, the characters in the lead of the party are more likely to take physical hits from monsters. And right now, Kiefer's got the most armor on him. Actually, there's some armor I need to move around. Kira doesn't have armor equipped right now. I do that in the base, though. Better not walk up to the boss without any armor. A bit first, I don't know if the order matters. Yeah. Okay, there was a human being named Ari that he named the robot after. Okay. That's what's going on between them. So it's exactly the same plot of Marjra later. Fine. Sure. Uh, add this oh no, it's random right here. This then trad. Eleven. 11's a good one. I haven't played Eleven since it was first launched. I really need to get around to replaying it. But I've also been saying that for a couple years now. Did happen yet? I haven't even played the, the S re-release, definitive edition, whatever you want to call it. Full mech more like easy mech. Like Easy Mac. I should have bought some. No. no. I immediately take that Mac. It is important to have fast foods handy for this uh, speed run. You don't get much time to do anything, really. I bought it on Steam shortly before they announced the S edition. So I've got a useless Steam copy of it. If I ever replay it, I'm going to buy the definitive edition probably on Steam. So I'll have two copies of it on Steam. Great. It wasn't a free upgrade. At the Fire 3. On the same system. I don't know anything about Breath of Fire 3, but one of my PlayStation memory cards has B-O-F-I-I-I written on it, so I must have played it at some point. Probably rented it or something, back when you rented video games. Left chest. Not the right chest. Just on the right is a can of box. It murders me when I open it on accident. Okay. Oh, we gotta talk to you first. So, um... Yeah, all the robots in here are malfunctioning currently. Even the ones in random encounters can randomly lose their turns because of Airy outside putting out the uh, radio signal. And I talked to that robot up at the top of the elevator and he said, Oh, confirming that you are a robot. Confirmed, you are a robot. Enjoy the elevator. No, I'm not a robot, but we're not going to correct him.
I don't want to put that on. Oh. Have a right. No, let's. Oh, this is on Kiefer. I see why. I see why. I'm gonna trade this to you. Do it and see what happens. I don't normally do it this way. Um. Good. Move Kiefer some herbs. Don't do us any good in the bag. Else in here that I'm supposed to have out. There's four battles we need to take in here. Three of them are back to back to back. Oh, I need to get my potions out of the bag. Maribel's just gonna parry for now because I don't want to use her magic on these first two fights. Attack, Kiefer is going to fire slash. This is what Kiefer does. Which I surprised my mic's not picking up its. So Three fights back to back to back. First is three mech soldiers. Second is the dude standing in front of us. Third is gonna be the real final boss. Mech, bark, parry. Back is, no, back. Park is not guaranteed to hit them, and when it does hit them, they actually have a chance of taking two actions, and they'll only lose one of their actions uh, due to Park. So, they're being really nice to me right now. They could break out of this at any point and start hitting me with Rain Slash, which will really mess me up. It'll hit my whole party for a little bit of damage. I might get out of this with no damage. Okay. That's good. So far, so good. It's very important that I end the next battle as full on HP as possible. Um, but that one, as long as I'm, like, relatively high, good, but that's better than needed to go. 
Okay, so this is the Machinoid. The Machinoid does not have much HP. He's at 250, but he calls for backup. Gebo's gonna try to bark him turn one. It's not very likely to hit him. Um, so as soon as he breaks out of it and calls for help, I will bark the backup instead. Oops. There it is. He's also very fast. Target. Do you heal yet? And stun the backup. And I know how much it takes to kill the backup too, so once we're down to just the clock max, uh, it'll be easy for me to gauge when the fight's gonna end and make sure my health is high enough. It's there. Hey, he's down. Um, Perry. So, probably four turns to finish this. Turns per clock mech. Woo! A lot of how long in this battle is going to work. So, he calls down his ultimate robot and it squishes him. So, we're gonna fight the ultimate robot. Sap on him. Still not very return. What's up? If we get the second set, we shouldn't have any trouble killing him. Um, leap attack. But his defense is about to reset. Thank you, Maribel's last chance at this. Fine. Find one. 
fight. Please don't blind keep hero. Okay, didn't blind anybody, but his defense reset. But we got another one on him. He's not used magic wall yet, which is really good. Okay, there is defense is down. I think we're good. they came up with. That's for you. We do, we got continued healing. The strangely good evil mech fight. Uh, Maribel's gonna breathe fire. Check it out. Ugh! Maribel, where did that come from? himself. Easy peasy. Alright, that was an abnormally good evil mech fight. Uh, normally, very early in the fight, he'll cast Magic Wall, which means for the next six turns, you're probably not going to hit him with Sap or Bark. Um, though if you have not already sapped him at that point, it's going to be a real slow fight. And he can cast Magic Wall twice. So it could wear off, and he immediately does it again. And I, at that point, you better have been playing defensively, <laughs> because if you're going aggressive that whole time, you're probably out of resources. Oh, and of course I spent one MP too many. Fine. So, my backup for when, uh, for when he uses two magic walls is to have those two potions on Hero, so Hero can just cast Upper on himself over and over and over, and become, you know, unkillable, basically. <laughs> he can easily stack Upper enough times that the boss can't hurt him. I was grinding runs of this game, there was a week where I actually played up through um, the start of the Dharma segment with Solo Hero is what I was calling it. Basically I just, because obviously you have characters forced into your party and they get story revived, but I was just not using them in any combat and letting them die. But I was pretty surprised at how few levels I had to grind to actually make that work. I had to get upper before Fire Giant. Um, but then every other boss I beat at normal speedrun levels with just Hero, just by stacking upper and uh, having those potions on me. Now I didn't have to step in the town. I'm not sure if there are encounters on the overworld at that point, so I stepped into the town to um, reset the threat level to potentially avoid a random encounter. There are a lot of points in this run where random encounters get turned off, though, particularly at the end of Islands. Uh, you, yeah, on the right. 1200 gold. one my least favorite or the second least? Marjo might have been. It was probably this one.
guess we've got quite a few triggers though to hit in uh, present fall road though before we get there. Southeast, straight past our immigrant town. And a spot we can get on the land. Anytime you see a king with this sprite, you know he's going to be trouble. So in the present, um, technology is kind of advancing right now. They've invented Roombas, which you saw in the king's bedroom over there. Um, but they know about the evil mechs from the past, and they like that technology. And they're trying to discover what they can about it. Um, so out west, where Thebit's house was, is a forbidden zone. And he, the king is sending his soldiers over there to see if they can find anything. Next is Verdim, soap opera town with Cavemon, then Deja, then Dharma. Do not care for the story in the next island. This guy here, he'll yell at you when you walk past. Age is one of my favorite islands in the speedrun. I get like two, three minute breaks in it. First one, I throw food in the microwave. Second one, I get it. The perfect island. They're spaced like 10 minutes apart, too. Gives you just the right amount of standing time for whatever you threw in there. Uh, I need to go out to the shed in the back. It's got a spare shirt in it. <laughs> if you visit the soap opera exactly. Fortunately, you do not have to do that. In High Spirits PB, he does the Verdim revisit. I skip it. Just kind of just on principle, really. I could go in there and get some agility scarves. Uh, but I don't want to spend one more frame in Vernum than I have to. The other thing High Spirits gets there is a strength ring, which is like plus seven defense for or seven attack power for hero, which is kinda significant when you're sword dancing, but at the same time, uh currently going in my route manipulating lucky panel so there's a decent chance I'll have a hacksaw which is way more than seven attack power. Yeah, Verdim's the love triangle. The maid trying to break up the wedding and the two morons who don't want to or who want to run away with each other but for some reason don't. And in the end nobody is happy. Skill armor, I think I'm just selling. I pick up something better for Kiefer before he has a chance to equip it. Grab 
happy. I don't know if he's happy and hurt him. Actually, Kiefer probably is happy because he isn't around for the revisit. fights the bosses have five digits of HP. <laughs> it's close to unwinnable as it gets. against in up and gone is uh, the fight that I'm the most worried about in the speedrun. I just keep out of here. Come out later when he's in. Okay. The village. Nineteen is the estimate. My PB is seventeen and a half, so now we might be a little faster. It's really going to depend on how Dharma goes. There's like three battles in a row in Dharma that could all wall me for a little while. But then it's pretty much smooth sailing until the final boss. Like I mentioned earlier, most of the bosses in the speedrun are very easy to survive, they're just difficult to fight fast. Pretty low for a casual playthrough of this. Maybe if you've played like a lot of DQ6 before and you're familiar with the class system, you could uh, get out of here around 60 hours for a first playthrough. And if you were willing to look up shard locations if you missed them. Yeah, 100 hour range isn't uncommon, especially if you do post-game stuff and optional content. There's not much optional stuff, I'm mostly thinking of the immigrant town when I say that. Hey Pop, thanks for the good luck. About to reach the islands where I'll need it. Bosses in the upcoming island are 
kind of tricky too. I don't expect to get stuck on them for long, but I am going to save before both of them. The first boss isn't that bad, I just underestimate him all the time. It gives me bad patterns. Which wouldn't be a problem if I were, uh, careful. Uh, yeah, that's actually correct. Uh, one of the question mark shards is in the casino. Grand Slum. So you would need to recruit everybody. I guess that's part of the Four Spirits RTA. Grind up the entire... Grand Town. Hate Melbourne win the beauty prize. Yeah, this was a very late PlayStation game. It reached the West like a year after the PlayStation 2 came out. I think it was 2000 in Japan, 2001 in the West. Might be a year off. Though after this, they still released uh, the DQ4 PlayStation remake in Japan. It's the same engine. Looks very similar, too. The DS version of uh, DQ4 actually looks pretty different from the PlayStation version, and you don't really realize it unless you look at side-by-side -side screenshots. But like in the DS, Four through six. Walls are not as thick as these that you see here. They're all very narrow. That's like one of the first things that I noticed when I was thinking about whether or not the two versions actually looked the same. But they are more than just a port from PlayStation to DS. Which of the run is spent on slime poker? None, but uh, I disagree about what the best part is. I would say the best part is Lucky Panel, and we are going to spend 10 minutes there. I never stay at the end. Do that. Oh, I still need to do this end. Should I go over there? I usually skip it. Iron seat, iron claw. I might go for the iron claw. Play. We'll do it. I think this takes like three or four minutes to go get this stuff, but if it saves me dying to the end of the Rainmaker fight once, then it's Breaking even. Saves me dying to Cavemon, that's even better. It won't though, it won't Cavemon. It'll be extra gold if I die somewhere though. This fortune teller there is where you can go to get hints about cards you missed. But they're pretty vague hints. Strength seat can't be worth picking up. No, it's not Pamela, it's just somebody else. Pamela's descendant is still hanging out in Ingao. Oh, not Kiefer. Oh, I rolled a two. 
thought Hero was in the lead for some reason. I'm not sure she has a name, she might just be someone completely random. I wonder what's down the other elevator. Could be two chests down there, but I don't know what to come. An iron claw. Evil pot, which I was gonna kill for some money. It has like 70 different answers. I do not know if I can use the N in Verdun or Rainmaker. This is comes on a bricks wood. What if I can keep the tights? Uh that'd be that'd be post lucky paint. I'm trying to beat it. It is a long one. Ugh. That <clears throat> uh, was. Fire pedestal? Why is it fire? Avon is fire man? Come on. You're rubbing up against the pedestals, you can't turn to face them. Your character just tries to walk along them instead. No. So this is the other island that I mentioned that has a problem with the gray rain. So moments before we show up here, the gray rain has hit the town, turning everybody to stone. But we're gonna catch the guy it to happen. Try to save the game for the first time. I'll see. <clears throat> Another meeting. Good luck with meeting. <laughs> I'm still an hour away, I think. You got time for a meeting. Or 
arms. I don't know, uh, the 3DS well enough. Not that good idea for now. problem doing it really early in the fight, which is not an issue for me, because, yeah, he'll get less out of heal more if he uses it early. That's already reset. That was not, no. I'm trying to sap him, but he really needs a heal anyway, so why not? If he takes double actions like that, Sap wears off faster. got an odd number of defense power. Which means if I cast it a third time, he'll lose one defense power, which resets the duration. Like I said, not a difficult fight, but I tend to underestimate it because it's not very difficult. Oh, what am I doing? Skipped one very important step. So you're out of here. Petrify the town. Duh. <laughs> Alright, now we got town music. Now the drama begins. Iwan's looking out at the garden. He's Pepe laying on top of his fiance. What is he doing? We're just talking about being stiff. Gee, what happened? Uh, someone's turned to stone in the herb garden. So Pepe jumped on top of the girl to protect her from the rain. But since he did that, the rain kind of wore away his statue a little bit, so he didn't quite get unpetrified. So we're going to need to take an additional step to help him. He's not really a statue right now, he's just stiff. 
guess. We're gonna find out that Pepe and what's her name are into each other, Linda. Even though Linda's engaged to Urban Guy. Um And the maid in the mansion is also into Turban Guy, so the maid is trying to get Turban Guy to break up with Linda. Run away with her, and then these two would run away, and then everybody would be happy if that's how it went. But instead, uh, Pepe and Linda just end up running off on their own. Not together, just individually, different directions. The only person who ends up happy in all of this is the maid. And uh, that's the story of the island. So, spoilers, but it's dumb, so don't worry about it. Aya is the main. There's also something going on here with uh, gardening. I don't know. Big old garden back there that I guess is owned by the dude who owns the mansion. But he, uh... Up and jump first. But the people who live in the shack out back are kind of the people who actually run it. Or servants or something. Well, Kiefer is noble armor. Fit the next boss without any armor. Fine. There's the dagger, which is a lot of knife in this. Took a lot of my notes off of, uh... Deputy friends, so. In some cases, I looked at High Spirit's video to figure out the name was in English. I know what the items are. I put that scale. 4,700 gold here. Gold iron. Let's see. Gold short. Here we go. Nice. Okay. Lead boomerang. Here we probably had another weapon I could sell to, right? later because I'm going to save before I leave town. All these herbs in my bag I'll use to heal throughout most of the run. In up here, Linda and a random merchant is offering to give her some money so she can run away with Pepe. But then he finds out that she's also engaged to Turban Guy down here. 
Oh, and then he's like, oh, well, then here's money for a wedding gift. He runs off, you know. Up here, get another bunny hood. Bunny hood. Hey, whatever is in this. They talk about a drug called the Mila drug that could cure him. We're gonna have to run off and find it. I think it's actually the only instance in this game where you have to go back in time in another island to progress the story. But the fact that it happens so early makes you wonder, you know, if you're missing something, do you need to go back in time to find it? I'm sure you get a hint, though, if you go to present in Gao. Wait. Alright, this cave. This way first. run in this game, each enemy only has like a two-thirds chance to attack you. They really don't need to all five attack me. I was supposed to buy antidotes at some point run and I didn't do it. Oh, okay. Two. chest. Start of this fight, we're gonna get hit with one or two casts of defense, which lowers your defense power by an amount proportional how much defense power you have. Don't have more potion? Don't have more potion. Alright. So after I get hit with that defense spell, I'm gonna equip my armor. And this is Cave Bond. Cave Bond is really nasty. Um, gosh, we gotta get rid of these jewel bags first thing. Alley turn one. One. Your bell will cast it back on him. Oh, damn. That's the end. Blind, I'm still gonna equal. And hey, we're gonna blind Cave Bond too. Uh, but everybody's blind. Um. Oh, my God. 
He can cast Fireball and Firebane in the same turn. It's unlikely, but it's really devastating. He also alternates between one action and two actions every round. So I knew he wouldn't do both that turn. Um, bags are down and all of my characters are alive, I should be good. Fireballs on a fire vein, right? He should have enough for one of either spell left. There it is. That's the last of his magic. Okay. So now he can't win. He has no magic left to kill Hero with, and Hero has high defense power. dying means I can't cast outside to get out of here, so that's annoying. But, I mean, what about Mirabelle is not annoying, right? Okay, cool, yeah, just blind us. Okay. Yeah, it's tragic. It's terrible. It's not annoying. Ah. The other two chests are a can of box and a tiny metal. Alright. So far the run's really good. Uh, the two worst bosses so far both beat them first try. Evemon and Evil Mac. And Evil Mac was a fast fight too. Avon wasn't bad. Could have been better, but I'd say kind of average. Um, the blind at the beginning is all that really slowed it down. 
Maribel dying means I have to walk out of here, but... Alright, wait, this is not... Get back there. Only walk out of here. You just go around. sure where you land if you fall in that hole. I went to the left there, I would have fallen in another hole. Okay. And here to reset the counter threat. There, but it probably mattered. I got that fight pretty quickly. Um, I haven't mentioned this yet, but the type of terrain you step on in most, if not all, Dragon Quest games um, affects how fast you get into encounters. So charging through all those hills gave me a much higher chance of getting into a fight. But the only fight I got was before I stepped on the hills, so whatever. We are in Ingao's past. This is why I bought an extra repellent earlier for Cavemon. I should not get any encounters on the way to town since Kiefer has survived all the boss fights. Alright. I think last time I did and I couldn't explain why. Oh, uh, wait, she's not in here. somewhere if I don't revive her here. Oh well. I don't know where, but there's no boss in till Dharma. Well, and that's a force to death, so even if she didn't get revived, it would matter. Yeah, I guess I just wasted 110 gold. Hila drug. Back we go. Uh, the main two reasons uh, I picked PS1 over DS, first of all, it's much shorter. The DS speedrun is like half again as long as this, so if you thought this was long... <laughs> um, 
Second is uh, allowance of turbo controller so that I can stand up during long conversations. Went off in that direction. I guess that's how you would get. Okay, get the Mila drug. not too much left to the story in here, um, and really that cave bond battle has absolutely nothing to do with the story in this town. I'm not even sure why you would go over there and fight him, other than, you know, there's shards there. You also don't get any shards for doing any of this. All you get is the island's completion. There's gotta be someone somewhere that comments on cave bond's existence, though. Not sure who. This is island number six out of eighteen. Oops. Point the camera in the opposite direction and paste it to them. Kaya and Pepe are talking about running off, but, or rather, Kaya's talking about Pepe and Linda running off together. She's trying to break up the marriage of Linda and Turban Guy so that she can be with Turban Guy. Then it starts raining. Oh no! Purple clouds just like last time. Thunder. Yeah, it's gray rain. We're all gonna turn to stone. Except it's not. It's normal rain, but, but okay. It's understandable that they've got a little PTSD. They were turned into statues yesterday. Here, Pepe and Linda don't care about the rain. We're talking about running away. Linda wants to, Pepe doesn't. Because he thinks that she should marry her fiance. But like I don't know. Urban guy's got a backup. And there's no evidence in any of these scenes that Linda actually likes Turban Guy. So oh, Pepe's just kind of abandoning her. Yeah. Then Pepe goes off and decides to be alone over in the west, makes his own garden. Linda decides to go off to the north and be alone in a nunnery. And neither of them are happy. The end. happened to Verdim in the prison. I 
I did. Oh, well, we'll get this first. Yep, no, it's the sail northwest, not west. Whatever. The overworld in the present generally doesn't have any random encounters on it, so you can just walk straight to wherever you need to go. That for a boss fight later. Full gold count. I could probably skip these chests, but I'm gonna grab them. I haven't really changed my route to better the lucky panel maps. That first place I popped into was the old town. It's not there anymore. Post room, self. Pedestal. Deja. Well, I'm actually ahead of my view right now. <laughs> Decided to keep him on our Rainmaker. By PB by over an hour, we get a bonus run. If Hero is on level 10, be fighting after, but level 10. So in here, I just need to talk to everyone, basically. And it's ideal to talk to her across from the stump, but it's just difficult to not talk to the guy on accident, so I'm just gonna walk around the table. One of those chests has an aqua shard in it. Maybe there's only one chest there. But if I don't pick it up, I'll get it automatically at the end of the chapter. Because pretty much everything in this island becomes inaccessible when you're done. Um, yeah. So all of the key items, the shards specifically, just get put in your inventory at the end of the chapter. Sneak them in there. inside when you pick up a shard. I'm gonna pick up like 40 shards in this run. I can I can just pass on two of them. Fine. <laughs> Layla's the new dancer and is the new Tula player. So these dudes are running around trying to revive God, because he presumably died fighting the Demon Lord. Um, but to revive God, they need a legendary dancer, they need a legendary Tula player, and it needs to be the right time. But they got two out of the three. Maybe it's the right time as well. We're gonna try it.
Let's just say you're to lie to him there. Seed here for safety. All right, join in the fun. You talk to a girl. Girl says, "Hey, am I not pretty enough for you guys? I need a drink." Fine, she's. She's fine. I have an idea. Let's get some Viva Grape and get grogged up. Over here, get a bottle of Viva Grape. Back to him. Viva. Tattoo plot. Kira's tattoo? I'll probably be half asleep by the time we get there. <laughs> I think it's basically just that you're somehow related to Captain Shark Eye. You're like his great great grandson or something. I want to point out that you cannot walk past this pot. It's in your way. You cannot go to the right. Alright, I got three minutes. I gotta go microwave something. standing on the controller.
Move to the dog. And... Oh, Jan's tattoo. Yeah, that just, like, marks him as the legendary Tula player, I think. They say it's related to the Earth Spirit. I don't know why you meet people with Earth Spirit and Water Spirit tattoos, but not Fire or Wind. I guess the Wind people have wings, that's kind of like a tattoo. In fact, I'd say that's cooler than a tattoo. other than that girl right there. She has a name and she has... Alright, now we're heading to the place where they need to attempt to revive God, but the shrine is at the bottom of a lake, so we gotta figure out how to drain it. Sleep again while they all figure it out. Yeah, the Dragonware 4 race is a race between someone running on English and someone else running on Japanese, and they're not going to use any version specific stuff in it. Which versus the normal Japanese RTA, that really just means no throwing holy water or fairy water at metal slimes. in the Famicom version, if you use fairy water and a metal slime, it just instantly dies. It takes 10 points of damage. There are also some other bugs that they don't allow in the standard Japanese. Uh, they call it Bug Limit RTA, popular category. And that run's been showcased a couple times before on this channel, actually. Um, but in the past, uh, turbo controllers weren't allowed in our normal Dragon Warrior 4 RTAs, so that was a second exception to the rules. Where uh, English players were allowed to use turbo, Japanese players were not allowed to throw holy water. And this, uh, this is like a kind of a micro puzzle, but if you take the wrong path in this dungeon, I think you either hit a dead end or maybe you even end up going back in the dungeon, but basically you just want to follow the path that doesn't have a treasure chest on it. Whatever that word was that it used in the tablet that I just read, uh, it means the opposite of greed. No. You aren't greedy, you get closer to God, so go the direction that doesn't have treasure chest. Our first wizard ring. We're gonna have four of those in this run, so they shouldn't all break on us. Wizard ring is kind of a consumable. You use it and you recover. Uh, it's a pretty random amount of magic. It's like somewhere between maybe 10 and 30. I haven't tested it in this game specifically, um, but it also has a 10% chance to break when you use it. But since I get so many of them, I will use them pretty 
uh, loosely. Like, if somebody needs magic, I'm gonna use it. I'd rather use it than use my potions. Um. If I break a couple early on, then I might get a little... a little less loose with them. I don't know. I've never gotten to the final boss with more than one broken. <laughs> We put the, I think that's called a Terra Chime or something, Earth Chime. Put the bells on the altar and the lake drained. So this on my right used to be covered in water. Uh, these is the, not that one. Da -da, first tiny metal of the run. Get the chest. Actually matter that much because of lucky pin. I'm gonna get a bunch of extra money. Part one, right? But after you lower the water in there, uh, all the monsters in this cave are gone. So now I can pick up some extra chests I passed up. Ability seed is really the important one. The others are kind of just money. If I weren't manipulating Lucky Panel, uh, Gabba would equip this fursuit for coat. Uh, but I'll probably get him something better. I'll get him an evade shirt, which is the same amount of defense power, but it also gives him evasion. Another cutscene. Um, first, we gotta open up the temple here, grab the Tula and the dress out of here, and then Jan is gonna play the Tula while What's Her Face dances. Uh, Kiefer's girlfriend, Layla. Um, it is an FMV cutscene. I would highly recommend some kind of uh, eye protection I'm going to be watching this cutscene. Um, not easy on the eyes. This is a very PS1 FMV. I'm going to run out of the room and grab my food out of the microwave. stare in deep. I think I demoted that to follower emote. That's the base of the builder in deep.
All right, we made it. At least I made it. I hope everyone else made it. Certainly best viewed through a, uh, you know, darkened lenses, perhaps even a mirror. Something to not look directly at it. Yeah, so... Shout out to the person earlier who said this game aged well. <laughs> Except for the FMVs, though, I can agree with them. Growling dog. We growling it. It's hard to see. Um. So yeah, Jan stood up there and said. Man, this isn't cool. I wanted to revive God because I got this tattoo that says I can't date this girl. But if we can't revive God, I'll just leave. So he did that. Which gives Kiefer move to room in. Room to move in. Kiefer. Room. Yeah. Second thing I said. Um... Dots join the party. Um, don't blink or you'll miss him. He's a very valuable asset to the team. He's very strong. He's the guardian of the Deja tribe. Now he's with us. He will help us out in battle and he's gone. He contributed. Probably. Off screen. We wake up and Kiefer is fighting Dots. He wants to become the new guardian. So that he can chill with these people and date Layla. Because he doesn't really want to be a prince, he's tired of his dad bossing him around. And this girl that he met 20 minutes ago is kind of cute, so why not just uh, give up and stay here? Kiefer is going to lead us back to the portal here. going to give us a bag with all of his stuff in it. And he's gone forever. And when you get that bag, that's when you get all the shards that I passed up. I passed up two shards in that chapter that I can't go back and get, so it just gives them to me. It's full of fire slash, yep. <clears throat> I'm not actually sure you can learn fire slash. Kiefer and Ira might be the only people who can get it. Unless it comes off a monster class, maybe. 
Maybe Magic Knight gets that, actually. I don't know. I haven't been to any of the advanced classes in such a long time. Probably since my first PS1 playthrough. Tell Kiefer's dad that he's run off with a girl. He uh, says, what? Oh no. I was gonna give him my blessing. Tell him that it's fine if he goes off on an adventure and give him this aqua shard. Why are you going to that? And we go off toward where Deja would be in the present. But even if we go back in the past, the tent is gone. Um, and in the present, there's no permanent settlements over here either. What we have instead is this dig site. We go in here. Go check out the exhibit, see what they got, give them five gold. I, I don't want to talk to you. No, he actually tells you there that... He, he mentions to you that you shouldn't mention to the scholar at the t desk there that he's out there charging people money to go into the tent. <laughs> he's probably not aware. This aqua shard. Oh, it is time for Dharma. Yeah, I cut right in line. I think the guy who's there later actually comments on you cutting in line. No, it doesn't. Pull the garter. Alright. Well, I'm thinking about this stuff. Ammo. Pursuit, that's fine. I don't care. We'll have plenty of money. I 
after this. Bump something I needed to not bump, and I gotta do it again. I use the worst of my two disc ones for this, so it's not too surprising that it's struggling. I should probably use the other one. In the hole. Oh no. I have to read. I need to get here as fast as possible. All right.
Just to make sure we got it, we'll do the first one. Hey, Joshy D. Thanks for the good luck. Oh, Nester! Oh my god. What the damn good reason I just saved? Is it this one? Yeah, the UPS guy just backed into my drive and the dog pulled the console off, so... Sorry about that, he's usually more careful about stepping over cords than that. <sighs> did it take the disc? It did, I might not need to reset. If that were to happen like three hours from now, I would lose three hours of progress. <laughs> Saving in this game is so slow that I really don't like doing it when I don't have to. Oh, that's Stone Axe. I thought it was Iron Axe. Okay. So anyway, I can actually explain what I'm doing now. So, I've got a tool here that uh, I found on a Japanese website that lets me type in um, the first board that I see, and then it tells me what the next couple of boards will be. So I'm going to grab the ones that are giving me the most valuable item. This one actually has Herb and Herb X3 on it. I didn't know those could both appear on the same board. It takes a while to... Uh... Oh, I didn't want to do that one. I wanted to do that one last. But it takes a while to get this started, because you do have to reset the game, and then you do have to manually type in every single item on the board into the tool. But then, uh... That's pretty fast from there. I've also modified the tool very slightly to put exclamation marks after the items I'm actually interested in. I don't just have to rely on the Google Translate. I'm not sure what one of these items is. I want the wizard staff that sells for a lot? Mm 
nine to shuffle in. It stops working if I hit the hand that shuffles all the tiles. I'm getting them mixed up and that's not good. Might eventually hit the wrong uh the shuffler hand. Yeah, my dog is named after the old Nintendo Power mascot. I'm intentionally revealing one of the items with a jingle last because it skips that jingle if it's the last one and just plays the big fanfare instead. I don't know what these symbols are supposed to be, but I've got names for all of them so that I can do these even uh, without notes. I'm getting garbage today. Okay, this is a good one. I'm looking at these boards on a 5x5 grid too, so it's really easy to look away and then look back and then my eyes are in the wrong place. Okay. The Iron Axe is a good pickup. That's the weapon that I'm actually supposed to buy after Dharma. Um, the Iron Armor is good too. This board has got a lot of pairs right next to each other. Dagger. Steel sword. Iron and it. This is a pretty bad seed. How did I get from that? Right. Good enough. Good enough money. I need to be able to buy two evade shirts, but I think I've got it. Let me make sure. I did no effort on this at all. I uh, have a tool that I got off a Japanese website. Confirm that I have 7,000 gold. I don't want to sell the axe. I can sell one of the armors. I can sell the dagger. 
dagger. The wizard staff. I have another one. I think Kira's equipped with one. Okay, we're good. Not much extra money, but I do have some extra stuff in there. Ah, oh, there's zodiac signs. Yeah, this tool is a website that actually is a reproduction of the generator. So, um, it knows, like, basically what the first RNG seed is that you would have when you power the game on, and then it expects you to get there between 400 and 700 frames. And, uh... So you type into the board, you know, the first board that you are dealt, and then uh, it loops through them until it finds the one that you put in. And then from there it knows the next however many configurations that'll come up next. Yeah, if you played DQ3 or DQ6 before this, or I guess even 9, then you hear that you're in Dharma, you get excited, you're ready to change classes and learn some skills, but you get baited. Back to my promo. I need two of these evade shirts. Gabo gets one. Defense power matters a lot for the first real boss I have to fight. Okay. I was supposed to fight the hole before that. No. Equip the shield. Equip it. Uh, you're gonna pull it. Equip. I'm gonna equip the wooden hat. He just give up. No. Wanna see? Can we build so that I can have at this point? Where items are we're gonna have 40 herbs in there, that's good to know. Wizard ring, I can equip on somebody. Um on Gabo. Alright. Now walk through all the lag. All that extra iron helmet I have. We're gonna buy a thief key here and a bunch of resources. Money, money. 
antidotes. One. <clears throat> Buy the thief key because it's the expensive thing. Around the middle to late game, hunting shards gets brutal just because the further you get in the game, the larger an area you have to search. These guys are a forced loss. Two of them have five digits worth of HP. I think one of them is actually killable. One of the two on the sides. But in general, you're just supposed to die here. better use of it than her. getting through the cave to the west, which supposedly leads back up to the shrine. But it's blocked by monsters. But the stone he gives us is like an infinite use herb. That's very useful. I have to fish it out of my bag and give it to Gabo. That's why I wasn't giving him herbs in my notes. We had quite a few different guest party members during this um, island. <clears throat> I'm not even sure what Flower does. He doesn't participate in any of the boss fights. Right now we're just going up to like the third floor. And we're gonna die to a boss up there. Or we might die to the scorpions. That happens sometimes too. Wow. Oh, wait. I thought there was. 
Hallo sagen. Play it very safe. Flower is um, effectively standing in front of Gabo right now. That'll help. And says you, I don't usually get. A I don't know if there are. Okay, yeah, there are a lot more floors between where I was and where I, we were going than I thought. Okay, we made it. So Flower says he'll distract the bad guys and attack them from behind. And he distracts them and then just runs off. We're just gonna get owned here. That was exactly how much HP he had, wasn't it? <laughs> the game with the Prima guide? That's probably a pretty hefty guide. guides. I know I had Ocarina of Time. Maybe Majora's Mask too? I don't know. I know I struggled to find things in that game so I might not have had that one. And by mid to late in 64 I was probably getting my information off the internet anyway. Don't worry. Oh I need to go in here first to get the world leaf. Chest is very easy to miss if you're not rotating your camera. Again, I'm rotating my camera a lot because it's faster to walk up and down than left and right. That's the case in a couple of different Dragon Quest games. Um. I know in DQ8, it's uh, faster to walk diagonally. Which kind of sucks because then you can't see where you're going. The way the camera has to be turned in DQ8. What's going on in this town down here? We're all people who tried to go change our class, but then got baited by the priest. <clears throat> Stole our powers and threw us down here. But every now and then monsters show up and try to give the this thing called the soul sword to somebody down here. And they claim that if you poke five people with the soul sword, then you get free. You get all your powers back, you get to go. Um this moron actually took it. So he's running around killing people. He killed that guy. Two. Three. Four. Now martial artist dude is backing off. But now the boss of the town who beat me up earlier is going to step in. Let's cast him in for help. Nah, Kassim's not a bad dude. He's one of the least bad dudes in this chapter, actually. Yeah, Soul Sword dude decides to jump at Neris because she's weak and frail. Dodgy jumps in the way and gets poked instead. And for some reason, the monsters say here that an attack that was clearly intended for Neris did not hit Zaji hard enough to completely shatter his soul. 
but also for some reason they take him away anyway, so it doesn't matter. I don't know. Take the bodies of the people he poked. Then life goes back to normal. Except that her brother's dead. But besides that. So, then we decide we're gonna go fight those monsters that just trashed us. And we'll see how that goes. Um, need some cash with me. I don't think I need the safety save, but I do need to sell some stuff. Because I cannot sell things up the mountain. I have a life equal. Yeah, I got enough to get survival money here. This is really just in case somebody dies on the way up the mountain. Yeah, that song is really good for a... Uh... Like, a bleak, ruined town. Right. Uh, this room always looks so weird to me with the ramps. like 30 HP walking through all that poison. And that's more than half of Maribel's HP. <clears throat> Alright. We get back up here. And the monsters just aren't here. Kessim making out with Mineris. He gives her a bracelet or something. And we follow him out to the town. So we find out there's a settlement here on the cliff. I don't know why this is allowed to exist, why the monsters don't just burn it, but... Um... This is where all the priests of the Dharma Shrine are hanging out, including the real High Priestess. Never mind, the high priestess isn't here yet. We gotta go save her. <laughs> There's also some guys hanging around with blue faces, like that guard down there. Those guys don't have souls, they're just puppets, I guess, for the monsters. The monsters must in some way be consenting to this town existing. The priest runs off, he's a snitch.
Another party join jingle. At this point, I'm going to come in here and save the game. I guess the dog pulls the console off again. There's also 50 gold on a pot behind him, so if I wiped in here, I could probably recover from it. Maybe I should have sold a couple things. I don't know. No shop in that settlement, though. Uh, even though I've got a lot of, like, 30 gold items on me. Can't sell them. Pickle here. This one, too. I know. Didn't see it. Not doing a safety save, yeah. That and before the final boss are like my two safety saves for normal RTAs. B attempts. Maybe a cavemon. But I'm feeling better about cavemon with if I've got potions in my pocket. to this island, then what do we do with the rest of the marathon? We've gotta kill this run how many hours early? 13, 14? I don't think Silver is ready to play DQ9. Estimate on the run is 19 hours. If this island goes smoothly, it'll finish well under that, but this island is... I basically added an hour to my estimate for this island. Even with the uh, safety from the Lucky Panel Manips, they don't help as much as I want them. Did I go the wrong way? I did, I think. are just over here. World leaf. We're gonna have three world leaves in this island. Really helps make up for not having any spells. Man, if I had access to my upper spell, that'd be awesome. Not. So here, um, acorn, Arabelle, world leaf, and they're like, oh, both of them. Hmm. Order. Now, uh, repellents don't do a whole lot in this run because we don't get very high levels, and they only work on the overworld anyway. For repellents to work, you have to be like 10 levels higher than the level that they assign to the zone that you're in. Except for that one time I went to past Ingao, I'm never gonna be range where that would work. Uh, is it, where is it up one? Let's check my stats. Find Wonder Rocks on Gebo. Nah, the desert area is next. Well, it's after this island and a grind.
All right, in up and guns. Here they go again. Yeah, some will join us for this fight. Um, <laughs> Flower will not. She makes some comment about returning our power, but she doesn't actually do that. She just takes their power. Heals us. In this fight, Maribel's gonna parry with the Iron Axe. So these guys both can get critical hits that deal two and a half times their normal attacks damage. And that's what makes them so dangerous. If they want to beat up on Kasim, I'm not going to complain. Okay, they're at one hit hero. Um, I'm only going to let hero attack if he is completely full on HP. Um, so basically the way my party is set up, um, the odds of my characters getting hit are Maribel 40%, Kasim 30, Hero now, uh, 20, Gabo 10. Well, that just changed. That death. Uh, but we can revive her. I need to. That's why Maribel is parrying, because she's in the front taking most of the hits. Kasim has effectively infinite HP, so it doesn't matter if he gets hit. So there's only a 30% chance that one of my other two characters take a hit. I'm getting a lot of turns where Gabo is allowed to attack. That's not common. Um, oops, oh no. Did that wrong. You using your item. Anyway. Um, so, uh, out of the things that I get out of the lucky panel, um, the defense power kind of helps. What really helps is, okay, see ya, Hero having a uh, an iron axe. I can't pick up Gabo now. Can I? Right, right. Um, go for it. Because the Iron Axe does more damage than the Boomerang, even though it's single target. But allows me to focus one of them down. And, and sometimes Kasim just doesn't do anything to He's got to be really low. left. Another critical hit. A double! Hey, cool. Let's go for this. He's down. And a parry. can recover from this, I will, otherwise I just reset and I have to pick up all those chests again. Oh wait, I used a leaf. I want that back, I gotta reset. Yeah, that was nasty. <laughs> There's n not really anything I can do to get Maribel more defense power at this stage in the game.
And Hero was pretty close to the most he can get, and Gabo, there's nothing I can do for him either. Um, Hero could get a couple of things out of Lucky Panel that would help. Actually, Gabo, there's a pirate hat he could get out of Lucky Panel. Um, but it's like 1% drops are the only things that could help me. Time Commando, we are the Time Commando. We're green, we're going into the past to help people. I've already... Yeah, this was the different seat I do want. <laughs> yeah, that was the first unintended uh, wipe, wasn't it? Like I said earlier, that's the boss I'm the most worried about in this run, and basically the reason I uh, have my estimate at an hour over my or my PB. the big problem with this fight is how long it takes to get back there. I gotta do that puzzle again, too. Don't let her out. If I had died without, um, using a world leaf, I could have revived and saved again, and then I wouldn't need to get all these treasure chests every time, and I wouldn't need to redo the puzzle. But the world leaf is worth the two minutes or whatever, one or two minutes of redoing that. Because after that boss, there are two more bosses. They're not a lot easier. One's moody. Well, like evil mech. He could go real easy or he could be a pain. In fact, he's difficult for the same reason that evil mech is difficult. But in between, we've got to run through a tournament DQ4 style, which is six fights in a row. And I really want as many leaves as possible for that. walk to the left around this. It's kind of habit for me to walk to the left around anything symmetrical, but the right is a little faster because of the positioning of the puzzle pieces. Now, murder. 
Gabo. Not even level one Gabo might help. I kind of wonder how much he needs to get one. likely to die. Um. Here is parrying. He can probably soak two critical hits and still be alive. So low. Give yourself. Ooh. Okay, sandstorm's gone. Should be down to about 200 HP. Also note that these guys are very fast. They are most likely both going to go before any of my characters returns. Gabo is my fastest character, but I can't expect him to go before these guys. Will be in real safe right now, hoping that Kassim picks up the slack. And he's not, but we're hoping he is. Actually, it counts twice in a row. That's very good. We're good. 
one of them dead, I am way less likely to die in this fight. Killed the wrong person. And Inop only has barely more HP than Guns. Um. So at this point, uh, you know, Chasm's hit him a few times. Probably at about 300 maybe by the time Gon's died. But we got him. Second try. That's not bad at all. Alright, still on a good pace. See how the tournament and uh, in Toria go. Second first try. Sure. Technically every try is a first try if you don't save after you die. You just reset and do that first try again. My in-game timer reflects the fact that I beat him first try. It must have been how it happened. Yeah, that fight's really rough, even casually, because, like, grinding doesn't even really help, because the critical hits are the problem, and you can't get better armor than what I've got. Right now I have better armor than you can buy in the settlement. Some levels might help, but at the end of the day, the Wonder Rock just doesn't really keep up with the damage they deal. Unless, as a casual player, you think to put Maribel in the lead and have her parry every turn. But you've probably got Hero, then Gabo, then Maribel, and Maribel is spamming the Wonder Rock. That's true, if you just never leave Lucky Panel, you don't have to deal with any of those. your favorite can I just say not six or nine most days of the week I'd say four followed by Five or three. I don't know though. Might have to lump in eleven with those two. figure. I've also been saying that we have the entire main series in the marathon without us including 10, so. Rip DQ10. Someday we'll get a marathon with DQ10 in it.
Yeah, eleven is worth finishing. Did this wrong, didn't I? Five MP. Okay. Runs out of MP. I don't know what thing costs though. Let's say four. I'm gonna say After this fight, I get my skills back, so I don't have to deal with any more bosses where I can't heal myself or cast upper. Do it only because of the music. Be okay with that. less bad the more times you play it, which is kind of weird for an RPG. Makes it a good speed game, though. up. Awesome had this great idea that if you stab Zaji with the soul sword, he'll get his soul back. For some reason he was right. Get my camera every time I turn here. Avoid walking left and right. straight back into the left. This is 80%. Trying to get to the credits as fast as possible. If you step up on that altar, you'll get your abilities back a couple rooms early. Otherwise, it just gives them to you if you skip that and make it to the end. Back up. No. Hey. What? Him. Okay. We will be saving 100% of the towns we come across, except for Probina.
frankly, Probina doesn't deserve to be saved. It's fine staying the way we leave it. I'm not really sure how you would define 100%. Defining 100% in an RPG is usually just stupid, honestly. But the best you could do for this game would probably be four spirits plus collect all the tiny metals, maybe? Maybe collecting other unique items? I would not factor in, like, monster drops, though. Especially in a Dragon Quest game where there are monsters that have, like, 1 in 1024 drops. You're not even casually going to try to get those. Job classes and monster classes, yeah, you could do that too. On every character, there's no shot anyone would ever do that because you've got five characters and you can only hold four of them. That sounds horrible. You'd grind everything on every character and then swap Maribel for Ira and do it all again. Afford it, rather. That is something you can get out of Lucky Panel. There's only two runs of any percent on speedrun.com of this game. Of course, there's not more categories. The Japanese leaderboard has um, the Four Spirits RTA where you fight the boss of the second bonus dungeon. But SRC, we don't even do that because nobody's done it. stage of the arena. Just the outside. Um, or of, of Dharma. We are at an arena here, and supposedly, again, if you get through the arena, you get all your spells back. You get to go home. Probably the last time I'm going to save the game until the final boss. So hopefully the dog doesn't pull the console off again. It's fine. I don't have anything else coming in the mail. Probably. 
Okay. Six battles in a row. All of them are going to be one guy and then three guys. Do you click the play boom right? Alright. All the enemies that show up. Like the three guys that come up to support the unique guy are kind of random in counter tier. Um, oh, she doesn't have the wizard green. That's gonna be a problem. Ugh. Can you read that over that? Yep. My bad. My notes don't remind me about that because she's supposed to have it equipped a long time ago. But instead she has the tights which are better for defense power. My notes are linked in the compendium and uh, just on my website, countess.net slash speedrunning. Try this again. Didn't reorder this time. I'm not going to reset over that though. Sure, I healed her before. Okay. So you might have seen there, Nepro hit um, the the guest Zaji with fireball only. With all area spells like that, or rather group targeting spells specifically, um, there's a... Uh, um, there's a 25% chance of him picking Zaji as the target, and then if he picks Zaji, it won't hit everyone else. Zaji's got a lot of support for us here. He's got Upper, which he casts pretty often. He's got Heal More. Um, he's got Bang. Bang is very helpful if he uses it early on when there's still four targets.
Hog chip. One down. <laughs> Get in the bowl. Got to surround him. Bolt rats because the bolt rat. Add. He also falls. Good. This is a really good fight for him to use bang on. Pretty good. Until they die. Saps, so we still stay ahead of it. This around's gonna cross. Don't worry about the Goopies, they're the weakest enemies that show up in this arena. is pretty dangerous. He has aim for more. Oh, I should use wizard ring on Mirabel. Or MP. Yeah, that was good luck with surround on uh, Garcia. Oh, not you. Another guy we want to surround. Wow, he just messed for no reason. I'll we'll take it.
Should probably have done uh, Hero Iron Axe or whatever. Ground is really doing work. They hit pretty hard, and he also has Wind Beast, and I'm not sure Wind Beast is affected by Surround. Oh, and Roundhouse. Dodged it. That might have killed Maribel if it hit. Yeah, my net say it's for about 50. Okay. And Don has a. Put the sleep dodgy and come up. Oh yeah, they do. It wasn't the bolt rats, it was the beak rats. Head most of the letters, right? Rocks at me. Mark only at one? Oh, that's where I affected. it. Me up in the... Okay, that's not a bad position to be in for the final fight. This one's kind of scary though, because he's going to show up with uh, three slime knights. And uh, I need to get rid of them. Meanwhile, she's kind of like uh, Cavemon. She's got Snowstorm, and if she spams that, it's going to wreck my team. But if she runs out of magic, I should be fine. can't beat me now. He doesn't have enough magic to be a threat. 
I did not see who Zaji hit with over there. He hit me, then it refreshed my duration if it hit him. Kind of useless. Now she knows she's out of magic. But she can't. She also has enough AI to know when she runs out, or when my attack power gets, or defense power gets so high that she can't hurt me. Um, and so she would be attacking Mirabelle and Gabo more often if they were still alive. But I kind of just plan on them dying. Nice. Yeah, she doesn't have any animations for her attacks, does she? Or do you learn to heal more? Okay. Three world leaves. I'm thinking about not saving. Because <clears throat> unless I use all three of them and then wipe, I wouldn't regret it. Even if I use two world leaves and wipe, I'd be okay. I think I'm going to go for it. one party member, but we gain another. We gain the High Priestess. So spider webs in this game basically make an enemy lose a turn, and this boss is very vulnerable to lose a turn moves. Um, so I'm going to be locking him down and having Maribel put him to sleep, and hopefully he does not cast the uh, magic wall spell, which we've actually yet to see, surprisingly. But that will make him much less vulnerable to all of those things that lands, or if he gets it up there. Victoria appears. Okay, I did not reorder my party, but sleep him, web him. and a magic wall. Ooh. All right. Turn one, huh? 
Yes. Some damage with no stuff on it. I might just want to play it safe and it wears off though. It's a critical hit. I think Fossey's got this actually. I think I'm I think I'm okay. Sap wear off twice as fast when you take two turns. Not magic wall. It's already gone. Okay. I was gonna say, there'd been quite a few snowstorms, a critical hit from Fossey, like. Alright. Three, right? Good game. Alright, well. Not gonna take 19 hours. Yeah, he didn't use his worst attack either, the ball attack. Exciting part of the run, my split for this segment is literally called Chat Goes to Run Their Errands. slamming those fire slashes too. That might have almost been a problem that Arabo was in the lead. They were all going for Fosse instead. Changing our classes here, I'll explain why in a bit. Oh, I got a couple more things I need to pick up before I leave here. But the next 30 to 35 minutes are just going to be a class grind. Just a heads up. Be preparing for the next part of the run. Get that. I want the wizard ring anyway. 
might be gold and the other ones are green. But well, I don't know. Oh no, I do do this in the past. I'm going to be going to Ingao, the volcano, volcano island. Because by the end of the grind, my hero will hit level 13. And level 13 is um, the maximum level that you can gain classes outside of Ingao. Okay, on our way out. Mountains are gone, we can walk to the penal town. Go back in here. Grab both of these. I didn't get the agility seed in the lucky panel in. I did get that since I missed one earlier. PB I tried fighting a group of slime knights. And they're pretty tough when you're a dancer. <laughs> dancer class is not good. Spirits, thanks for the raid. We're all just in time for the class grind. In case you didn't watch enough class grinding on High Spirit stream. Sure. In a voice channel here in a second. My party still this. There we go. More. Cabo. Live. Zero. Feel like I have one more seed. Actually, now I'm thinking about my audio settings on this PC. Might need to tweak it, not just hop in a channel. This is what most of the uh, grind here is going to be. I'm going to be walking up and down in this area and holding auto fire and throwing boomerangs at these monsters. You probably could moderately optimize by selecting your targets with Mirabelle's whip, but... Oh, I don't have the boomerang equipped. Let's do that. I just assumed it was equipped because it didn't... Tell me to pick a target. I have right now, Hero's a dancer, Gabo is a thief, and Maribel is a uh, mage. And I'm waiting for Gabo to learn knockdown. 
I'll explain the full goals here in a minute. Let me go set this up. Audio good. And storm. We just need one more class level for Gabo. This grind kind of goes in three segments, where the first one's about five minutes, second one's about ten, third one's about uh, uh, fifteen. Nice. I haven't run the GBC version, but I know it's very similar to SFC. My SFC PB isn't very good because I always get bad luck on the golem. I've gotten more than my fair share of back attacks from Golem and from Dragonlord 1. Up, but that's good enough. Good to hear you now. You're on the right audio channel. I don't know. You don't hear me? No. Probably need to change that too. You're in the wrong, uh, my, my headset has two vo audio channels on it and I think you're in the wrong one off to swap them. <laughs> yeah. Good 
skip this step. Fine, I can skip steps. I got first try on almost everything in Dharma, so. I died to Inop and Gons once, and that was it. Audio is too difficult. Hey, they can hear me now. Ah, oh, yeah. There he goes. Woo! Here we are. <laughs> How goes the run so far? That's gone good. Uh, I think that death in Up and Guns was the only wipe so far. You know, one death in the... Uh, in the uh, in the terrible segment I call between Evil Mac and Anatoria is I'll take it every time. Yeah. Anatoria was really nice to me because he used Magic Wall turn one and still died on me. I think I got to sleep through the Magic Wall and just killed him. Like I. He didn't wake up till around the time Magic Wall wore off, then I had him sapped, and then his second Magic Wall didn't matter, and Evil Mech, I think, just didn't use Magic Wall. Yeah, the uh, the only tricky thing, really, uh, with Antoria is using the orbs. When he uses the orbs, then you're just in trouble. Yeah, I actually didn't see that move once today. It's probably the first time I fought him without seeing it. Yeah, he doesn't use it too often. That's why we use so much uh, def or so much. Uh, crowd control on them because we're trying yeah. to avoid every way possible to avoid the uh, the orbs to get thrown at us. Yeah, turn one, you're putting him to sleep, throwing a spider web at him and barking at him. All three characters are trying to stun him. I got yeah, people are asking about the grind. So the reason why, the, the sole reason why we grind Gabo, uh, 17 fights, um, is more because he has the extra, um, because he's only going to be one class, he has the extra battles that he can be a thief, and two, that gives us a very fun utility ability called Knockdown, which is pretty funny to watch, and once Kalanus, uh finishes the grind, you'll actually get a chance to see what it does in the first fight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I already have. Grab the tidy at the point. In the wrong spot. <laughs> There's a lot of items in this game. Yeah. Add to that. Okay. Swing over to Dharma to get the turn point in the present. Then change Gabo to healer class. So ultimately all Gabo is gonna do from here on out is just master the healer class. Um, for now we're gonna grind him until he learns heal all, but we'll come back later and get heal us. Um, Hero is going to take Dancer for the first half, and then he's basically going to master Warrior to get Sword Dance and Evil Slash. Um, and I may also use Squall Hit in the final battle as well. And then uh, Maribel just sits on Mage the whole time. She's not going to be in our final party, so we just really want her to have Boom and Blazemore for boss damage while she's here. Yeah, Sword Dance is the most overpowered ability in this game. Um, yeah, it's like attacking it's, three times for free. Yeah, basically three attacks for everyone. <laughs> for every turn. It's, was it 75% damage four times, I believe, is the point? Yeah. 
So it's... And the, uh, you get it from basically mastering two classes. So, well, yeah, so... You get them I to level five, yeah. Maturing is what it is, two classes. But yeah, basically the way, like, once you hit five ranks in a class, you're you basically what the game calls mature um, in the class. But if you mature uh, warrior, actually you get a hybrid skill called sword dance, and uh, that's what Countess is going to go for for uh, his biggest damage for the rest of the game. And um, you can do that with a lot of different classes, but nothing else is as broken as, as sword dance. Nah, I can't get Melvin yet. I've got to wait a couple more islands to get him. I think yeah, he's after the Gracchus Island. Yeah. You need that Mermoon. Yeah. Yeah, so that's Gracchus' island. One grumpy fish. He looked grumpy in DQ6, and then in this game they gave him the beatdown attack and just completely throwing a tantrum there. He's probably tired of people coming in there and trying to make sushi out of him. That's true. But yeah, Countess did mention that he's only going for heal all now and then multi or, uh, heal us later in the game. Um, to give you an idea how strong the heal us spell is in this game, um, I believe there is only two classes in the entire game that get access to the heal us spell. Maybe three, because there's one then I think one of the yeah, I think I think it's what is it? Two or three hero classes and one monster class gets Omni Heal, and that's like all of the multi healing that you get in the game. Yeah, and we don't get a Sage of Stone or anything, so just Gabo with Heal Us is gonna be our only area healing in the speedrun. Yeah, Sage of Stone is, requires a lot of, of mini metals, tiny metals to collect. It was just, it's not worth it unless you're doing the Four Spirits uh, speed run, which is basically the super boss yeah. run. And Gabo's max MP is pretty garbage, but he's the fastest character by far, so he gets the healer job. But he's only going to end with like 75 to 80 max MP, so that's seven casts of heal us, basically. And that's after you pump like a whole bunch of yeah. magic into him. Like his magic total is really terrible, but his agility is 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 great. So. Yeah, and it doesn't help that he ends on the Mariner class, which has a slight nerf to MP. Oh, nothing like sal or uh, whalers on the moon. Yeah, this phase of the grind, what we're doing is getting Hero to level 5, Dancer, and then he'll swap to Warrior. Learn Sidestep at that point. It'll be shortly after Maribel and Gabo hit Magician and Ultra, respectively. We're not getting much XP out of this. We're probably going to end around 13, 7, 13, I think. My notes say my Gabo got to 10. I think that was Edda's uh, Gabo that was 7, but maybe his Gabo died to some things. But if we were to hit level 14, we'd have to go somewhere else because these monsters wouldn't give class levels anymore. Yeah, Gabo, uh, Gabo has a weird EXP curve. He hits the first couple levels really fast. He gets to 4. And then five and six are just a massive slog. Yeah. And then he starts picking up and go faster again. But yeah, so Hero will get level five Dancer and then switch to Warrior. Uh, once he reaches level five Warrior, he learns Sword Dance. But you also want him to learn the Evil Slash ability, which is um, in other games people know it as like Hatchet Man. I can never remember the name of that one. Uh, apparently I'm a little quiet. I can look oh. up. It probably didn't help that I started out by balancing myself against the title screen of this game, which is by far the loudest part of the game. Yeah, definitely. 
game audio has probably been a little quiet the whole time. Still a little low, there's a little more I can move him up. Yeah, I guess even though Ira comes with Warrior and Dancer, the game doesn't consider her to have gone from Dancer to Warrior. So you have to get her 30 extra battles in Dancer after she hits level 5 Warrior. So yeah, this is one of the weird things about this game, one of the class me or mechanics with the classes. Um, in order to get a hybrid ability, you have to actually actively switch between like uh, reaching level five and two specific classes. But in a case of something like Ira when she joins you, um, the game doesn't consider you matured until you've done 35 fights, I think it is. And then the game is like, oh, you've just matured once again. And uh, and that's when she gets credit for uh, actually um, getting the uh, the uh, the requirements for sword dance. I don't know why it's in the game like that. It's just something that's coded into the game that's really weird and, and obscure that most people uh, don't actually know. Should be getting close, but I'm not counting at all. I'm usually paying attention to how long I've been here, but I didn't notice when I entered this time. Yeah, I usually just like pay attention to what time I went into the grind and like, oh, I'm, this is the class level that I just reached, so I know I'm getting close, you know. Ah, Maribel hit magician. That means ten medals to go, according to my notes. So I do have those to fall back on. Two battles, Gabo should hit Altruist, and then it's eight battles to you. Oh, you heard Mario. He said you can split. I guess he's taking over. Come on in, Mario. Oh. oh, he said that because my split name for this segment is Chat Runs Their Errands, because it's 35 minutes of nothing. Yeah. Hey, it's Cole. been a while since we've had this game in the DQRTA, huh? Yeah. Uh, two years, I think. I think we had it in the first marathon after there were a couple years of a break. Yeah, I think it was like 2018 or something was the last time I ran it or something like that. There's not a Metal Slime grind, but there's a Metal King grind in the final dungeon. Um, if I see any Metal Babbles, I might kill them, but I'm not going to fight any Metal Slimes, because when I run into them, I won't have Evil Slash, so the odds of killing them is very low. Unless they show up without any support, I'm just going to run from them. Yeah, maybe you take uh, you go for uh, some Liquid Metal Slimes, Metal Babbles, yeah. when you get to the Lighthouse. But yeah, because then I can evil slash. At that point, so yeah. One of the fun things about this game is metal slimes. All the metal families are really susceptible to crowd control. You can stun them. You can. You can. Uh, you can. What is that? I think you could stun. You can like things with like howl. You can throw nets on them to entangle them. Like spider webs work on them. Like, there's a lot of ways to just stun the metal creatures in this game. Yeah, Bark works on them. The bark ability, Gabo gets at level 2. <laughs> now, can you stun the level 8? I haven't tried it because I don't know why you would want to. I don't know. I've, I haven't tried anything past the Metal King. Or the Metal Yes, is, I guess, is what I thought you meant. Oh no! Yeah, any of the metal slimes you can you can, oh. you can like bark them and you can throw fishnets on them. 
You can panty dance them, panic dance them. <laughs> I have sex though. Which is one of the other good things about having the Mariners uh, as your party. Um, is by the time you get to the final dungeon and you're going after the Metal King Slimes, everyone has learned Fishnet by then. Yeah. So you have other people who can throw them on the, the King Slime to try to stun it. So by then, I think everyone has something else, because Ira's got Lure Dance, Melvin has Lush Licks, and Gabo can Bark. Yeah. I mean, you can do like I said, there's just, there's a lot of ways to stun Metal King Slimes. And if there's yeah. one thing that this game has, it's a lot of the same abilities with a, with a different name. And I think that just comes with the fact that there's 54 classes in the game between humans and monsters. So they just kind of take a lot of, like, stun abilities and whatnot, crowd control abilities, and just... Give them a different name <laughs> to to match the kind of creature that they are. All right, fifty six more fights and done for now. Till the next five in a couple hours. Yeah, this game is kind enough to take away your fourth party member and not give it back to you for several hours. <laughs> nope. So, yeah, you know, like, if you want to survive the next part of the game, you got no choice but to do some kind of grind. So you can get a fourth party member that you're actually going to use, so you can actually grind them up. I've seen on the Nico board that some people have their comment that says Maribel route instead of Ira route. I've always been curious what they do with her. But it they also note how many battle class battles they grinded and the Maribel route is always like 50 plus more battles. Yeah, you have to give her some way to actually survive cuz <laughs> she gets terrible hit points. Yeah, um, and terrible resistances. So you you it's more of a the only reason like you would think that hey we're grinding maribel now so let's use her in the final party because we're putting all this time into her but you're gonna find out that she's just so super squishy that when we get her back later in the game when we use her in the in the later part of the game um for the for a part she just she like dies to everything <laughs> <laughs> pretty much Her job in the last battle she's featured in is just to sit there and parry. And sap, if you can get saps off. Ah. I don't know if my notes even suggest doing that on him. Uh, on the flame guy? No, the uh, yellow dude that sword dances you in the maze, the 3D maze. Oh, I was talking about after that when you're forced to use her. Oh, no, he's after the fire spirit. Nengal? Yeah. That's how you get the, the wind spirit. Oh, yeah, you do use... Yeah, that's the last fight she has, Nengal. Yeah, it's just defend. Defend and hope she soaks some hits. Yep. Ambushed by cat mages. Great. This one's gonna be over when Gabo gets heal all. One battle before that, Hero should get Sword Dance, and three battles before Sword Dance, Maribel should get Boom. So I kind of just it's zone nice out until I see Boom. You also have to be careful because there is a healer rank called Heal All. You might see and think that you learned Heal All and saved five minutes. I've done that before. <laughs> One of my last two runs, I was confused about that, but I knew Hero didn't have Sword Dance yet, so I had to look through my menus to figure out what it was I saw.
unfortunately, after you switch hero from dancer to warrior, he starts going last every turn because soldier or warrior gets a huge hit to ability. And dancer hero really going fast. first. Yeah. But he also hits a heck of a lot harder though as a warrior. Yeah. He actually has more attack power than he will when he switches to Mariner later, but Mariner's better balanced. Yeah. The end game class for everyone when, when we all got the abilities is just turn them all into Mariners because yep. it just has a nice balance of stats. Really the only class that you could consider to be better than being classless. I think it's only big hit is to MP isn't a big deal. Yeah, you got four wizard rings. That matters with Gabo. So. Yeah, Hero and Ira don't care at all, and, and Melvin has got wizard rings. If Melvin is running out of magic at that point, you're you're already in enough trouble. No. Well, all he spins it on is heal more, and he has like twice as much max MP as Gabo. Even though Gabo I know, gets every he's, he's like magic in the game. His job is to use a stick and sometimes, or to cast heal more and hopefully help out. And occasionally, uh, see what he tastes like. Yeah. This is around the point in the run where I realized that I could have beaten Dragon Quest IV by now. And I could do it again by the end of the run. Not even halfway there. Hey, repellent. Didn't know they dropped that. Is that the tongue red? No. Oh. Great. Yes. <laughs> One thing you don't count on in this game is uh, item drops. Yeah. That's for sure. Cat mages are cloth armor. Something is copper sword. Maybe that's the slime knights later. I think the first time I did the second grind, I got three copper sword drops off of the slime knights outside Dharma. It's 330 gold for you right there. Um, oh wait, no, they're 55 a piece. My bad. They're oh, hopeful at that point. You never know when you're gonna need every little thing. That might help me buy the 35,000 gold Gigan armor. You know, sometimes you just come up a little short. A 19 hour estimate. Oh, Dharma went really nice, so I don't know. Might be closer to 18. It's seven hours in right now, is that on a pretty good pace, yeah. Probably ping silver and tell them that unless something else goes terribly wrong, I'm probably an hour underestimate. I would say you're even further than that right now. Yeah. Find PB, but PB has bad spots in it. Yeah, I would, you know, even with, you know, some smooth sailing, you're easily on like 16 to 17 hour pace. Of course, there's a lot of left in the game, so you never know. You know. This run has one of those things where you could get to the final boss, and uh, he just says no. Yep. All of his phases, except the first one, can cut you down. You, you know what's... I'll tell you what's annoying about the final boss, is he has one phase that's, oh, that's scripted, and it's the hardest phase of the fight. Yeah, because Gabo only has like an 80% chance to go first. Phase yeah, two. Plus, he has that one round where he can do one, two, or three actions. Yeah. <laughs> and if he does one, it's free. If he does two, it's meh. If it's three, you're like, oh no. <laughs> I'm usually using two world dues on that turn. One for yeah, before and one for after. Yeah, that's world dues and hope you survive. Because if everything goes smooth, you don't see that, that, that turn again. <laughs> yeah. As long as he doesn't put to sleep the person that's using the second world do, it's usually it. It can also depend on like how bad it was when his first phase shifted, if I didn't count his HP right or something. 
I don't keep close track, I just assume everybody deals 200 damage. Oh no, this is the longest any percent speed run in the series in the series. By a lot. <laughs> yeah. The difference between world record times of seven and eight uh is what, four hours, I think? It's eleven twenty-two versus fifteen twenty-two ish. I thought 8 was closer to 12. It must have been improved a bit since oh, I no, lost paid attention. Oh, no, it got all the way down to low 11. Oh, wow. Yeah, that got a little bit of a reroute in some areas, and uh, a couple people were able to bring it under 11.30 for sure. I know they've been talking about Out of Bounds in the Discord lately. I don't know if we're going to see that later or not. You know, Keanu was working on it and looking at it. I don't know if he's worked it into his run. I know that it's difficult, and there's some stuff with it, so... Yeah. <laughs> oh, he doesn't, he doesn't need to add me to the layout. I'm going to be coming and going for a while, y'all. <laughs> I just want, I just saw Countess was grinding, and I figured I'd at least give him some something that someone to talk to while I was grinding. Yeah. Uh, the 3DS uh, speedrun is much longer, actually. Oh, yeah. It's like one and a half of these. In fact... Let me see. I think I just had a Japanese runner submit a time. I haven't had a chance to watch all of it yet, but yeah, a Japanese runner submitted a 3DS run time of 17 hours and 21 minutes, which would <laughs> be first place. Hey, well, that beats my PB in this game. The English speedrun world record of seven 3DS is 22 hours. Oh. Record out of the two completed runs of it? Yeah, me to be two. fair, there's two completed runs, me and Mario. <laughs> but yeah, the 3DS version has a much bigger world map. It has much more loading. The menus are the worst lag that I have ever seen in a video game. Um, it is virtually impossible to move through menus in the fast in the 3DS version. And uh, they added a lot more cutscenes and stuff, so... And there's more grinding because of the way the game was built, so... Yeah, and this engine and also the, like, the DQ3 and 6 engine on SFC are, like, the fastest menus in the series, so it's got that to compete with. Oh, the menus in this game are brilliant. I love them. Yeah. You can really speed through these menus. Like, when you get the menus down, you can, you can go at blazing speeds without, even without turbo. I was saying earlier, if anyone were to pull up Keta's VOD, the PlayStation 1 Japanese record holder for this game, and watch just any five-minute chunk of his video, you'll see what the difference is between me and him. <laughs> he just flies through everything like he's grinded single-segment practice of, you know, every town and menu in the game. Menus, or his camera is constantly spinning to make sure he's walking at optimal speed as much as he can, and... Yeah, the top JP runners, Japanese runners of this game, they, uh, when they, when they put attempts into the game, they put a lot of attempts into the game. And yeah. They got every menu turned down perfectly, or every camera turned down, every menu down. Well, like, most of the Japanese games, there's, like, competition for first place, but in this game, Keta's got the record by 20 minutes. <laughs> there's a gap between him and second place. And he's also got the record in, or rather had the record in uh, PS or DQ4 PS1, which is the same engine, until they merged in the manipulation category with it. But he's got the fastest unmanipulated time. Which, when I say, you know, DQ7 isn't as competitive for the record uh, as other games, I still mean that there are more times on that leaderboard than any English board for Dragon Quest. Pretty sure there's over a dozen people who have done the Japanese DQ7 run. I could check, I got nothing to do for the next... Uh, 
I don't know, what is Keta's time? I know Gaga Milky has a 12.38. Uh, in this game, a 12.34. Oh, so Gaga is getting down there then. He's only four minutes behind. Yeah, he's not on the Nico board though, so I wasn't aware yeah, of him. The speedrun.com. Okay. Second place on Nico is a 12.53. And there are 41 total times. I was way off. So yeah, that definitely beats any Western Dragon Quest board. <laughs> Four battles to get. Boom. That even beats the Dragon Warrior 1 board. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, translating and learning this run back in 2014, I think it was. And yeah. uh, there was a Japanese runner that at the time called Ping Ball who was who was uh, doing runs of this and uh, I was he was actually helping me translate the game because I was the I get I got I was the first real Western runner of it uh, and there's just a lot of items in this game um, yeah I've been yeah, using his website he has a sub 13 hour time also yeah. he's got a website that has a lot of statistics on it like for things like uh, for almost every boss in the game what are the odds of them doing their two worst attacks in one turn <laughs> Oh that's yeah, where, that's where I get those statistics. Tiny. And they're sword dank. I mean sword dance. Yep. There's not enough characters for them to put the E at the end. Like round hoss we saw earlier. What? Can heal? I learned it and not notice. But one more, no burn. Could have been the fight after Sword Dance. Oh, there it is. So Sword Dance is so pow overpowered that in the uh, 3DS version, they took out hybrid skills and gave Sword Dance to the end of, I think it's the Pirate class, which is a Tier 2 class. <laughs> and they nerfed it too. They, they even dropped it down to, I believe, 50% uh, times 4 attacks. Uh, on par with uh, Quad Hits. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why the 3DS speedrun is so much longer is is you can't just grind to sword dance on people. You have to actually grind th uh, max out tier 2 classes um, in order to get the abilities that you need to, to beat the game. Yes, heal all heals one person to full. He's not losing, so that's a start shadow though. That's that's true. Nerves. Okay. I do have two thousand more gold than my notes expect me to have, so that's good. We got the iron axe off a of lucky panel, so I don't gotta buy it. We're gonna change Gabo and Maribel to Mariners, because as we said earlier, they're just a good balanced class. They've got more HP than being classless and uh, a little more agility, and those are the two main stats we really care about. No, heal all does heal all, it just heal all one. The one person all. There's just not enough characters uh, in the room in the game for it to be called heal one all. It sounds like uh, Khan has only had one death in Dar in all of the Dharma segments, so... Yeah. That, that's a victory. That is by far a victory. Actually, I think I still have all three of my world leaves. I've never had that before. Let me look. Is that true? Well, yes, I can tell you, anywhere from Evil Mech through Antoria, out of all the runs I've done of this game, I have never gone deathless between Evil Mech and Antoria. So, one death is my PB. <laughs> so, like, just being able to do that is is huge. Top room. There's two top rooms. I was right the first time. Yes. Yeah, right side. Sneaky chests in the wall.
working on. This fight coming up is actually pretty difficult if you do no grinding at all. Class grinding. Oh yeah. Like th this this fight will surprisingly get you, but it's also the fight first fight where you get to see Gavo's new thief ability. Hmm. And uh, it's uh, it's good. <laughs> it, it's a sad it doesn't work on more things, but it's good. Okay. down and accidentally parry. So yeah, knockdown. Um it does exactly what it says, but it's more comedically does it. <laughs> and he gone. Uh, don't rob dance, he took ten magic from Maribel. I accidentally parried with her, and I thought, oh well, now I won't use too much of her magic in this fight, and then he steals 10 magic from her. Yep, that's right. We've finished the grinding, and now we've moved on to a not grinding. You've forgotten what this looks like. Still holding that flower I accidentally picked. This guy. Chief Hideout is over here. They ask how to get the Dharma. The guy says go to hell and walks in. I'm gonna walk up and uh, say the same thing because. Apparently the password. I heard that's how you get the Dharma. Yeah. I got there earlier. All sorts of hell. the bandit leader. Blade of ultimate power. Oh wait, that's 3DS. Ultra heck. These guys might be my favorite enemy in the DC series. Oh, this one can actually cast his spells, and I appreciate that. Yeah, these things are really adorable. Oh, we uh, ran Gabo. Alright, see ya. That might be a problem. Oh, he does have 74 agility, okay. Well... So now, uh, Countess, uh, doesn't have to really care about his EXP total for the, most of the rest of the game. So, like, you do want to get as much experience as you can, but you don't want to grind for it. His levels are really slow in this game. Yeah. But now that he's passed the first grind, which has that hard level 14 cap before it becomes really irritating. <laughs> there is another grind later on, but he's going to grind in a spot that um, outweighs the, uh, the, the level that he can get to really easily. I'm never positive if I can revive along the way or not, so I'm just gonna go out of my way to revive here. Where's the board here? 
Yeah, the uh, the guy in front of the giant pot is the priest. Oh. Of course, where else would he? Yeah, they don't make it very obvious unless you talk to him and find out. <laughs> hero weren't dead, he'd still be out damaging. This kind of peak Maribel, though, it's downhill from here for her. Just remember, she has the sap spell. That's 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 what she that's, that, that's what she needs. As long Three as times as useful. Tapping most of these bosses, that's she's done her job. Doom I'm gonna fight a couple of things in this zone because Hero does need about six more battles than everybody else during the final class grind, so you can get them here too. Yeah, this is uh, in order to save time later on when he when he does the next grind. It's uh, you have to make up those few fights. So this is. This area making up the fights on uh, on some of these fights that are like one type of enemy is really good. Although he probably needs to get magic back on Maribel before it really is. <laughs> yeah. Hoping it wouldn't take three sword dances. Good. I mean, they are jerk birds. More story again, finally. Kind of. What you really got going on right now is this castle's been... Everyone's run out of it by monsters or kidnapped. I think we find out where they went later. Now we're gonna go over to the town over here. Mario's favorite island. I thought your favorite island was Hubblestock, Mario. Or is that just the 3DS version? I don't know if I can guess which uh, island that is. Uh. Let's just say the comp the, the competition gets renamed Hubble Stock and uh. of, like making fun of Woodstock <laughs> or parodying, I should say. Oh well, the, I guess the chief here tells us what's going on. The people who were kidnapped are over. At the Sphinx, turning it into an altar for the Demon Lord. Yeah, once you finish Dharma, that's where the game really starts to pound into your head this thing called the Demon Lord. <laughs> yeah. Until then, it's just kind of you're going back in time and you're resurrecting places and you just you don't really have a direction. But now, Dune is the like the first real place where you're like the the one before that, the Deja Tribe. You hear. Okay, we got this about resurrecting God, but then after Dharma, it's, you know, Dharma and after Dharma, it's now there's this demon lord, you know, people are trying to resurrect. Best joke in the game. Oops. Not the school.
Yeah, this game has a command called uh, Quick Joke. It's an ability. Um, and uh, it basically makes the, the enemy laugh, or they make you laugh, and you lose turns. So the game has a whole, like, 60-plus Quick Jokes, and um, this, this guy's name is one of the Quick Jokes in the game. <laughs> Bone Rider. Oops. But the earliest I'm aware of that the Demon Lord has mentioned is there's an inn that gets in the present. It's like right on top of where Cave Mon's cave was. But I don't think they're like they don't really explain it to you in a way that it sounds relevant. It just mentions Oh yeah, the god and the demon lord killed themselves at some point. Killed each other, and... It's not really presented as something that you have to worry about later until around here. The demon lord starts having a presence on the islands in the past. The next island is really where they hammer in the demon lord thing. A lot of demon lords in that one. All the way out here because we don't have ears and can't hear the storm. Door, sand flies in her face. Oh, maybe we should. Mirabelle's down there complaining about having to dig holes, and Gabba's like, oh, want to move bodies instead? Full skeleton sprite that it uses in other places. Are they just holes that let them fit more on here without it lagging or what? Hadid is also the son of the chief. Just run off because he's trying to investigate what happened to all the asshole. Figure out what to do about it. <clears throat> trying to find the ancient dragon Uranos. Also says that uh, the Bone Raider we killed had a locket or something that used to belong to the team. And at some point in this cutscene, you open it up and find there's a message. Did it? Yeah, Hedy doesn't really like the Queen. He blames her for everything going on, and then when he opens up the locket, he's like, "Oh, okay, gotta go save her." Yeah, pretty much.
dialogue also canonizes I'm done. This game definitely has some special lines that um, yeah. that they made just from the direct translation. <laughs> Certain islands seem more directly translated. Um, they seem to have taken more liberty. I was commenting in Rexwood that like everybody in that island used very big fantasy sounding words. Like they were trying harder to localize the game and not just directly translate it to the point where this yeah but it's to the point where you've got this eight-year-old child just using these crazy big words that no child that age would yeah this game uh, unfortunately was not really localized it was just a direct translation from the Japanese version so there's a lot of weird looking um weird looking names and things you know like death pal that we had earlier <laughs> well that was actually pretty direct his japanese name is death amigo yeah but death pal i mean it's like amigo didn't fit friend, you know it's like they couldn't you know what's funny is one of the names that really got me but then i realized it's an actual name in mythology is belly mauer oh hmm isn't that that guy with the whip that just takes one action per turn and he's one of the bosses in the run? Yeah. Oh, alright. <laughs> I think he can crate you for like 200 damage, but at that point that doesn't even really kill you. Maybe Gabo. has decided that the legendary dragon should be in this exact spot in the river. There's nothing here, not even fish. I mean, that could be a good tell that he's there, because it's been eating the fish. Yeah. Water looks... immediately gives up and we've got to find a fish guy. And uh, when they were describing the uh, legendary dragon they mentioned that it's got a big golden horn on it but no it saw it because of this golden horn and we saw earlier a skull with a big golden horn on it at dig site back over there check that out our five gold to get in here. Dollar and we have to say yes to him like four times in a row. And then show the charm. Yep. The best part about this segment is when the elder gives you the dune charm and he says show it to my people and and uh and they'll tell you more information. The first person you have to show it to is the elder. It's yeah. like He's like, oh, you have the charms. I totally forgot I gave it to you. Oh, okay. Uh, since you have that, I'll give you more information. Yeah, 
Yeah, the estimate was 19 hours, but it started off so smoothly, we're probably going to be well under that. Be more like 18. Or less. Too much less than 18. You know, it might be a PB. For some reason, this guy wants to go to the past. I don't think there's a lot there that's not there in the present, but... Alright. Gives us the fossil. The entire giant skull just goes right in our pocket. Scene where we're dragging him into the past with us. Doesn't give us the opportunity to take him somewhere else. There's always room in your bag. Ditch him. Now we return to the chief's house. Turns out he's gotten sick while we were gone. Wife. dying here, but we've got this giant fossil in our pocket. Show it to him. Here, look at that. And then he takes a nap. Yeah. Then everyone decides, well, you know what? I guess he's dead. I guess the, the legendary dragon's dead because you've got his skull right there. Why don't you go throw it in the river, I guess? Put him to rest. I really wonder where the skull was in the past, because we brought this thing time the present. But for all we know, this dragon might still be alive in the past. Yeah, if Hadid went with us and he had the water from the river on him and he held on to the, the fossil, I wonder what would happen. Alright. Chief died in this box. Of this box into the river. It's gonna wash up shore, up north, I guess, where, uh, whatever that town's called. Second to last island you go to, they're gonna find this box with a dead old man in it, I guess. I don't know.
Now we're gonna throw the soul of Tyrannos. Iron bone. Back. If there's one thing that this game has, though, is some glorious movies. Beautiful. This is quality 90s CGI, baby. Nope. Not as bad as the God Revival scene. Oh, the next dancing scene is just... Mwah, beautiful. We're riding off on the sky. This was easier than building a raft. Well, someone's got to think of the trees, obviously. I guess to that point, there aren't really any trees around that I see. This side of the river there are. They all got cut down to build the Sphinx. <laughs> To be. Alright. And as I enter this building up here, you're going to realize how quiet the music has been for the entire uh island. This 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 Sphinx does have some amazing music. Yeah. But up until this point, it's like nothing but the sad music and quiet music and the past overworld music. Suddenly, Sphinx theme. Yeah, the Sphinx theme and uh, Deja Tribe music are, are my two favorites. Pigmon. We're gonna fight a couple of these as forced encounters, but they're really weak. 400 HP, so they don't last too long. It's a little longer if I hold turbo too long and don't sword dance. HP to justify heal more, but okay. You know, they're just fully servants, you know, they're, they're not they're not high enough level to learn heal more. Alright, this lady think that we were wounded in that battle. He was watching the same battle I was. Wow, she gives you free herbs, and all you do is complain about it. Wow. Yeah. Alright, now we get to throw stuff onto pedestals again. 
Oh. Get first try. I got first try on the orb in the ruin and I did it. So yeah, if you haven't realized that this game is a 3D game, but everything, all the sprites and everything in the game are in two dimensions. Oh. So the interaction between 2D sprites on a 3D plane uh, gets some pretty hilarious <laughs> results sometimes. Alright, that one's... Both. Oh, I think the option Defense seeds don't do a whole lot at this point in the game. It's only one or two points of defense. You know, it's helpful against uh, a boss, this next boss, who actually does punch pretty hard. Yeah. I don't know what these big dudes are talking about. I wouldn't pay attention. Here. Something, something, spikes. prayer, sacrifice, something, something. Probably get rid of the spikes with it. Damage, so. And the queen here gives you a free heal anyway. I think it's one point of damage per step on those, so I probably lost like 30 of my over 100 HP. Yeah, the spikes don't do anything to you. Hi, I'm High Spirits. You may know me in such Dragon Warrior 7 speedruns as Dragon Warrior 7. For some reason, the queen doesn't heal Hadid when he runs off. Neither do the ladies upstairs who also heal me. A lot of people who heal me in this dungeon, but he just gets beat up a lot. I'm probably gonna fall through here. supposed to walk along the damaged tiles, but uh, there's only specific squares on there that are hits that drop you down to the bottom floor. Probably don't need a second chest, but I'll get it. Is always nice to have. Three fights on this floor, I think. Oh, I probably won't have to wait for Evil Slash now, so that's good. Their pigmon bullying a couple of ladies. Chest down there, I'm gonna pick up.
Pigmon rematch. Oh, only one Pigmon this time, though. Probably only last few turns. Didn't even do anything. Okay, that was a good one. Holy shit. No? 400 HP. Great. Alive. Okay. I mean, they're tankier than they look. They just Apparently. don't look like you. Probably the last train to enter the dungeon. Should be good for the boss is out here trashing Hadid. That is up here praising the demon lord. You know, Hadid, don't put a stop to that. Yeah, Seto uh, isn't too hard with after the crime is done. Uh, the big thing is he can just charge up and actually hit Nerva really hard if he wants. <laughs> yeah. But he doesn't have a lot of health and he levels pretty fast. He's got 8 MP. He just told Hadid that Hadid couldn't compete with his magic. Wasted it all fighting Hadid. Yeah, but how much does Hadid have? That's true. And of like 4. <laughs> has 7. That's the snap. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> Massacred himself. I guess that's something to watch out for. <laughs> yeah, massacre can be an issue, but you hit, hit yourself as much as you hit the enemy. Yeah. Massacre was ridiculous in DQ Monsters 2 when it stopped being able to self target. You just have one monster solo grinding with Massacre getting critical hits every turn. Beat the boss, we're gonna remove these dark rubies from the eye of the statue. In a later cutscene, somebody's going to take this from me, even though I'm not actually going to have it. Um, don't worry about that. They're magical. Yeah, it's, it's, it's magical. Unless I accidentally walk into Dune again, that might happen. Uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be careful about going back to Dune too fast. Yeah. 
I think if you walk in there in the present, it's like a three minute cutscene that you don't need. <laughs> I think my PB does it, so there's three minutes we can save. So yeah, after you finish this area, uh, what happens is if you come back in the present, um, they uh, apparently they, they took your likeness down and, and passed it along uh, for every generation waiting for the day that you would return so they could celebrate and thank you for saving them. Um, so if you walk into present day Dune right after you're done here, which you don't have to do because there's nothing in there for you to do, uh, you get a whole bunch of celebrations and cutscenes and whatnot celebrating you being the heroes. Why don't they all do that? How come this is the only place that gives me a little recognition? Saved you all their really lives. Want everyone else giving you recognition after you just complained about going back there and wasting three minutes? And maybe not in a speed run. <laughs> how many how many Dragon Quest games do you go through where your the hero gets fifteen feasts as he's playing through the game? Yeah. The DQ8's big on that. Oh, you saved us. Feast! <laughs> no more! I just ate a feast! Oh, oh no! Probably don't need this stuff either. Sorry to need that one then. I can open the box. Okay. Did it. I opened a box. A mighty box indeed. Well done. I'll head back to the castle because I feel like we left something there. But what if he wanted to be left there? He does, so I don't know why I have to go back and talk to him. Well, you don't know that he wants to be left there. I can find his way back to the portal. I know, he's just like, just tell him to walk south. He's just like, see it over there? That blue thing, swirling blue thing right there? You can see it from the castle. Could just tell him that, you know, this castle will exist in the present now and has exactly the same markings for it, but... I don't really get the purpose of staying behind in the past, though, because at this point, he's not studying, studying history. Just studying, like, present-day culture. I mean, isn't the whole point of him being what he is? Loving history, loving the uh, archaeology side and, and all that stuff? It's like... He just got his wish. He got to literally see everything that he's studied up close and personal. I mean, of course he's going to be excited to be there. But it's not history anymore if you're living in it. Well, maybe he doesn't care about history. He just cares about unraveling the mysteries of it. Ah. Oh. I mean, he does say he spent his entire life coming up with theories and everything, but now he can actually solve them. Let's look how happy he is. Yeah, the big old giant head. The one thing I don't get, though, exactly, uh, you can almost call it, I don't know, a time paradox, is you go back in path with him and then leave him in the past, but the guy at the archaeological site in the present uh, remembers the guy that you left in the past. I uh, am. Yeah. It's definitely a time paradox that they uh, that they just kind of brush over. Earlier, Mister. Big old pot. I do like uh, how this place changes in the present, because it looks like the whole village from the past just got buried under the sand, if you pay attention to some of the things that used to be taller in the past. Plus, there's an old man fishing inside of a giant pot. That's true. Important later, but not for about another five or six... Like the... They had like little windmill things in the past that are barely sticking out of the sand now. 
There's also, um... Uh, the fence all the way around the village just barely sticks up now, and it used to be like a, you know, eight foot tall fence. Earth already? Yep, two Earths in a row. So this is the island where you actually meet the dragon, the demon lord. Yep. In person. Yep, all of them. talking about how this town's poison. Everyone here is sick. Being in bed dying. You should get out of here. But wait, if you do want to you know, help out first, why don't you go north and talk to the girl up there by the tree? Get out, save yourself. But if you're not going to, maybe you can save me. Was more of a sleepyhead than Maribel. According to Gabo. What we do there? Now on our way back into the village. We're uh, on their way to cut down the sacred tree. A robe called Yotic Demon Lord. That out. Come up here, and they are trying to chop down the tree. Stop them, demon lords. They're going to burn down the world tree. Earl actually wakes up, and she gets owned. Red vest guy. I mean, you know, he is the demon lord, obviously. He's pretty strong, right? Yeah, so we're gonna confront the demon lord here. He's gonna cast Firebolt on us. Except it doesn't work. So this other demon lord over here plays most. Obviously, they spent all of their magic trying to also cut doesn't work. Tree. And the third demon lord over there, she's gonna cast Exploded. It's also not gonna work. They spent it all on the tree, I guess, yeah. So, now you gotta fight one of the strangest named bosses in the series here. A weird guy. not a threat at all. He's got 350 HP, which is like two turns of combat at this point. Yeah, this area definitely lacks imagination with this ball. <laughs> yeah, they don't even look very threatening. I mean, the actual boss of this area, he can, you know, twin hits up and like pummel down someone. <laughs> But yeah, this area just feels more like okay. We're you just went through that big emotional ro co roller coaster that is Dune. Here, have a palate cleanser before we send you to another really big area. Yeah. Because then after that is the even bigger area, which is you know, when you get to uh, when you get to the uh, Gracos area. So well, this little elf girl explains to us that the water supply to the village has been tainted. That now they're trying to destroy the sacred tree. Protecting the village. 
rest before we do anything about it. She's not feeling great, so she grab this jug here, collect some water dripping off the tree. to her and she's instantly better. Tells us to try putting it in the... or try using it to save the villagers. First we're gonna go back to the mayor and use it on him. Just jumps right out of bed. Tells us that uh, we should probably try pouring it into the well and see if that helps. Go we'll do that. So, try to pour it in there, and then the weird guy knocks us away. Hey, stop trying to poison our well. Everybody, these jerks are trying to put something in our well. It could be poison. So, what are they going to do to stop us from doing this? Because they say we're pretty strong, we probably can't fight them. So all they do is they just stand in a circle around it. Now I can't get close. I mean, you know, when it's, it's fully surrounded. What do you, what are you gonna do? Push, push out, push a normal villager out of the way? Oh, please, they got pitchforks. And stuff. Go from the diagonal. Hey, Dave, do you see diagonals in this game? Walking diagonally right now. You're not walking diagonally. You're walking in between cardinal. Ah. Huh. I mean, you know, you know, 3D, 2D, 3. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're walking in 2.5D is what you're doing. Yeah, this run's probably gonna take about 18 hours to finish. We're off to a good start oh, right now. Yeah, I went back to Elf Girl. She said, oh, they're standing in front of the well. Why don't you go underneath it instead? Do that. This route through the sacred tree's roots. Dungeon's very big. The paths are so wide. for this dungeon aren't kind and of difficult to list out all the directions you're supposed to walk in so constantly finding down to I never really memorized this dungeon I just kind of like did it <laughs> I don't know the best way to say it is I just kind of like did it without thinking but I couldn't tell you how to get through the dungeon It's one of them I need for it, uh, confident about the way through it. How about the 3D maze? That one, I just kind of wing it. My, I don't even have notes, but I gave up on trying to write down a path through that maze. I, I have notes, and I kind of know a direction, but at, at one point, I just kind of wing it, too. And I'm like, once I fall down a big hole, I know I'm there. 
you know, I actually made a 3D rendering of the maze in a program to give help me like visualize what the dungeon or the whole room looks like. That helped me get through it a couple of times. So you ready for some wellception? We are fighting a well inside of a well inside of the town well. Yep. Evil well. Or dance. This is pretty much just the general boss strategy for the entire mid game is just Hero Sword Dance, Maribel, Blazeborn, no heals. We get Melvin, he'll pretty much just be a backup healer as well. And at that point, Gabo will have a, another offensive tool though. Pretty typical for a Dragon Quest speedrun, you end up underleveled until you get to a grind, and then after the grind you're overleveled for a little bit, so the next couple bosses are pretty easy. But we're not, like, leveled in experience, just in class levels. Hold for that boss. You're getting rich! Yep. All right, through the holy Bell's, water. Uh, favorite boss. Here, fight all three of these wells at once. Now, weird guys freaking out. I need to go about this. The fog His plan to surround the well has failed. He oh. doesn't know what to make of it. Foolproof too, but somehow they found a way. It was a team effort, and as a team, they failed. This version definitely has a lot of charm. You just have to figure it out, because <laughs> the game doesn't the game doesn't give you a whole lot to help you figure it out. You know. You will definitely miss shards. You will definitely not understand some of the instructions. You will definitely get lost, but it's a great JRPG to just chill through and, and spend $300 of your life on. Your guy was a wolf dude the whole time. So funny thing about this boss, and Countess just realized it the, uh, the other day is... There is actually a random encounter inside of the tree that he just went through. That is a reskin color of this enemy. Yeah, like a yellow version, and he uses kind of the same moves. Blood hits and everything. Yeah, he does basically the same thing. Except I don't think he does. Tw I don't think he does twin da uh, hits. I don't think he yeah, raises his power, but he does quad hit, and uh, he looks exactly like this. He does a reskin. Hence why this uh, this area has some very underwhelming bosses. There he goes. Did get one bike kill quad hits off, but it didn't do a whole lot. It spread out pretty much. Yeah, he's only dangerous if he focuses fires down someone. Yeah. Yeah, this is the 3DS version of the game. It's just it's the original. This is the the 3DS is the remake. We don't get a feast here, but we get to stay the night, so that's something. Encourages us to go up and say goodbye to the girl up north. I don't know if it's required or not, but what she's about to give us is extremely important. Talk to her, and she thinks us, and she's gonna give us the blessed staff, which shows up in a couple of Dragon Quest games, it casts heal more in battle. And that's gonna save us a lot of MP, since poor Gabo just doesn't have much MP.
Got best chair looking. Good. Good call. Yeah, this area has the best shard. Uh, I'm sure just about everyone who's ever played this game has missed this shard. Yep. Yeah. And talk to the guy in the cabbage patch. I guess just you're a random be lost. farmer tilling the field is like, "Hey, I found this rock. <laughs> you want it?" <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> so if you just didn't happen to come back after finishing the area and talk to this guy to get the fire shard, <laughs> especially since the mayor tells you to leave town and go talk to her. Yeah, you have to actually talk to the uh, elf girl first, and then come back and talk to him, because he doesn't have the shard until after you leave town. Bizarre. Alright, so now that we have defeated Evil Well, time to fight another Evil Well. Such a scary well inside the well. This one's weaker though, it has like half as much HP. Yeah, he only got the protection of one well. He doesn't have the other two wells to, to beef it up. Just imagine how powerful this well could be if it had other wells. Kind of funny, in the present version of Krage, there's like 15 wells in the town now. Yeah, there's... There's definitely wells in present day. Also, this air the area that he was just sat in, um, at the end of the game, it also has another name uh, known as Slime Island, oh. where you can fight every type of slime in the game except for Platinum Jewel Slime on that island. I think I covered this earlier, but we came here and we got supposedly a magic carpet that could be used to find the hero, but we uh, took it out on the world map and unrolled it and it just didn't do anything. We gave it back to the guy and now he's disappointed. Well, you'd be disappointed too if you lent out your magic carpet and someone brought back a fake rug. Yeah. I'm not gonna talk to him or encourage him. I stole your healer heart. Where I'm going. Goodbye. So, town got really fancied up. And it got a lot more wells, you can probably see. I accidentally walked out the back. I'm gonna walk through it again. Oops. It's also home to uh, uh, one of the rich guy's mansions. Yeah, one of his like three. Fully staffed even when he's not here. Yeah, if you ever need extra money, you just go into that room where the uh, where the maid is waiting. Grab the, uh, the scholar specs, the inspects. This place actually has the uh, the second key in the game, but you don't get access to it yet. Thank you. 
Uh, I think it's in his other house, actually. You have to come here a oh, second right. time first. Rich guy, too many houses, all melding together. This island is exciting because there's a new bridge that's opening up tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a blast to go check it out. in this house and we'll find out that this girl apparently broke her ankle earlier today or sprained it. So, I tells her to take it easy. check out the bridge in the morning it is a pretty fancy bridge we wake up in the morning and girl from earlier is up to the top of the stairs and oh no she's slipping I caught her good thing because we wouldn't want her to sprain her ankle again some dumb comment and then come on let's go back on the bridge the guard here says the ceremony is tomorrow well that we thought it was supposed to be today but must have misheard talk to that guy too oh so, that's that's our bad probably we're gonna go back to the inn and for tomorrow. Probably just got some misinformation from someone. Yeah. Stay in the night here. There's Amy again up at the top of the stairs. Oh no, she's slipping again. You know, Turtles, that's funny you say that, because as a full-time streamer, I barely even know what today is.
Oh, uh, man, that looked like that hurt. I hope she doesn't do that again. Yeah. Wait, let's go check out the bridge. The next day, so they should definitely be open, right? The bridge is closed. Bill, ceremony's tomorrow. And then the guard asks if he thinks we're stuck in some kind of time loop. We say yes. Because you're starting to sound like Baldock over out east in the laboratory. I'm gonna go talk to him. And if you actually explore around the town, there's actually a lot of things going on in there that are uh, reset each day. Like there's a statue somebody's working on and the arm falls off. Then you come back the next day and it's fine. And somebody's missing a button or something and you give it to them and then the next day they're losing it again. Or the couple that never uh, that never gets a chance to actually have a date. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fun little town. I mean, the the definitely uh, at the part in the game right now where like each zone is heavily gimmicked. <laughs> you know, you, you saw the demon lord area. Now it's you know we're stuck in a time loop area. You know, so a lot of the areas are definitely like little stories, just little gimmick stories. It's almost like playing a platformer. And just going to a new world, and you're like, oh, this is a gimmick, you know? Yep. Bullock here says, oh, something's wrong with time? You should probably open up the clock tower, because that probably has something to do with it. it. doesn't really elaborate on that. Just, just a clock. I don't know how it would be bringing up the flow of time, but okay. Check it out. Slime. Fight. This oh, yeah, this one metal slime. This, this and the true uh, roots of the, the world tree in the in the previous area are the actual first instances of metal not slimes in the game. kill them even at the level that uh town is at you realize how uh how hard it is to actually gain uh experience levels in this game oh, i didn't realize how durable a, the stupid horseman would be hey okay. won't do that again it's an impressive looking horse around me Go up in the clock tower and pull this lever. And that stops the clock. All the music. Apparently also froze time. Oh, so I was right. You can see the sparkle on the right is the wall letter button or whatever they're making. All right. In the basement of this house, there's a painting of the clock tower. Ring the stopped time turns into a portal. Get to go through this dungeon. Which is pretty cool. Now it's. Still like four, five, like five hours away from finishing this one. No, we are past uh, the halfway point by a number of islands. We did ten out of the eighteen. Making progress. Still about halfway done with the game. A lot 
lot of encounters in it, eh? Maybe they were just too scary or unexpected to, to put into the games. You just didn't want to get people thinking, you know, or like scare people. Dumbest of those enemies in this game is the evil book. Hey, the book is trying its best, okay? It knows no one's ever going to read it, so it's just, it, it takes its every chance that it can get. Get the Dharma and you just find that first evil book in the in there. You just tell yourself, okay, I'm, I'm done examining things. Everything in this game is going to attack me. <laughs> Gotta be full HP when you examine bookshelves now. Cause the evil book also casts beat on you. I think I have a highlight of the evil book killing two of my characters with beat. Potion. Probably not going to use that before the final boss. The purpose of potions at this point is basically you give them to characters who are not Gabo, so that if Gabo doesn't have time to use Wizard Ring, someone else can throw a potion at him. Yeah, definitely going to be hoarding a bunch of items for the specific purpose of the final boss, because... That's really the the last really horribly challenging thing left. There yeah. is just some really annoying things, like those two purple gremlins. Oh. oh yeah, I still... So this is Time Sage and two Maki Makis. And the Maki Makis at any point can reset the battle by throwing the Sands of Time around. And uh, if we finish the fight, we'll get the ability to do the same thing. But we can really slow this down by just cutting constantly. Yeah, it's just it's annoying. Because <laughs> there's also two of them. Yeah. They can do it whenever they feel like, also. 230 HP each, and Sword Dance targets randomly. Time sand. Now, the thing about time sand too is that it takes you exactly back to the beginning of the battle, which means your tactics reset, your memory cursor resets. It's exactly what you were at at the beginning. So there, I turboed into Blazemore instead of Boom because the memory cursor reset to where it was when I started. That's something I have to watch out for if I ever use the time sand later as well. Miss. Find it. Not even affecting my characters with the magic robe I bought them. Okay, both the Maki Makis are gone, now we're good. Except that hero's blind. Fine. Can you sap? Fine. There we go. 
Time Sage started out with 788k, so probably already missing half of that. RNG, that would get you stuck. Because, uh. Yeah, you would have to do something different to make it come out in a different outcome. Or else they're just gonna keep looping it, especially if they outrun you turn one and use it. Uh, then yeah, you'd just be stuck. Unless you got Squall Hit, I guess. Alright, so with his dying breath, he says, Ha! Huh, you can defeat me, but as long as the hourglass behind me is tied to the clock tower, they're never gonna, you know, they're never gonna be free of the time loop. And he's like, wait, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Then we break the hourglass and everything's fine now. Here's the extra. You have it. Well... Oops. The time sand is not consumable. You can use it over and over. So, basically at this point, as long as Gabo is alive, I have not game overed. Didn't reset the bat boss fight. Unless it's a very fast boss. Well, I'm gonna peek out here for a little bit. Alright. And I'll uh, try to join you again in a couple hours. Okay, dope. Move the time sand, put it on Gabba. Okay. We stayed at the inn again, and we woke up, and now it's tomorrow. Amy was still at the top of the stairs, but she didn't trip. Or, she started to, but she caught herself. So if we go over to the bridge... It's actually the day of the ceremony. And I'm gonna shove these people out of my way. Because I want to be in front. That's an interesting point. Maybe it is consumable, but you just get it back. <clears throat> okay. So there's some more subplot going on with Amy. Apparently she's... Alex's daughter, but it doesn't really matter. You never hear about any of these people again. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff going on in this town that we don't really get because we don't talk to everybody at a speedrun. You can optionally go across the bridge and you're actually taken to Verdham again, but in a different point in time, a um, few years after the, you were taken there in the, uh, where's the thing? That was right? Yeah. Um, in the It's Dedicated Shard Area pedestal. But I hate that place, so I'm not going to go there. Okay, 
Hey, you missed almost half of Dragon Quest Seven. All right, so Balak's laboratory in the present is this giant, really weird looking tower. Grab extra items because I don't know how much money I need. How much extra I have. There's a lot of puzzles in here. None of them too complicated. Now we just gotta push both of these statues onto the long bar-shaped buttons here. After. Is this the right column? Let's just say mind the pit, which is not helpful. Counter cancel here. I don't know if that really helps though, because you get a fight here. These columns. Annual. these guys out of here. Didn't work that time. I die a second chance. Big quests in the game? Not a lot. Um, this game has a lot of main content in it, but not a lot of optional stuff, honestly. Um, there's some optional stuff uh, after the final boss that we don't do. A couple of bonus dungeons. But there aren't really many skips um, as far as like glitches go, and even just from a you know glitchless perspective, there isn't that much stuff that's optional. I'm gonna be doing one glitch in a later island that skips like five minutes of content over the course of this you know 18-ish hour run. That's pretty much it. Speaking of glitches, there's a very minor skip coming up right here. It works today. It didn't work last time. I yeah, no! Well. Yeah, there we go. Basically, just as you're pushing a rock like that, you can get, uh, go straight into the wall. Heal, does that fire hurt me for it twice? This room is obnoxious, it rotates on its own. Here. Here there's just three buttons to push in this room and that's all it is. Yeah, I walked through a wall to get out of bounds there. That only skips a couple of seconds. I'm not sure what you have to do in that room, but it's not a huge skip. Probably just uh, saving, 
I'm not even sure if there is a puzzle in that room. There might be like a switch or something you have to hit, but I think you just walk straight to where I ended up. But walking out of bounds is a little faster. Uh, it's the two back chests, right? I think the other two are can't. I think in the past this any metal, so I didn't grab it. Most of the chests that I don't pick up have small one. But now the admission fee is 10 gold per person. You can see that they've got a new skull with a new horn on it. If you inspect it, you can see that it's clearly fake. The horn has been painted. And yet, the admission fee has risen. find this land shard. That's another case we go into the past. I'm not sure what the plot triggers are for this. Maybe you just have to leave and re-enter, but uh, for some reason we have to revisit Dune. Grab a fire shirt out of here. And if you were to talk to the queen here, um, I mentioned those eyes we took out of the Sphinx. She'll give you one of them if you talk to her right now. But if you never do that, you never get the, the eye. And yet, in a later cutscene, like I mentioned, somebody takes it from you even if you don't have it. I went the wrong way. Down too far? So we're about to be back on track with my inventory. Yeah, we got six, uh, or rather, we got four uh, Japanese runners all running Dragon Quest VI. It was a very strange and unexpected submission, but it'd be fun to watch. The last or maybe even three events, nobody submitted Dragon Quest VI, and then this year we get a four-way race. Why not?
goes the run. It's going great. Had a like I've been saying, one death in uh, Dharma to Inop and Gons, which is entirely expected. Besides that, no deaths anywhere really. There's been some sloppiness from the fact that oh, I haven't played the game in a month, but uh, you know. Could be free. I don't offhand know of any other times I can save time, any places I can save time on my PB, but I'm, you know, I think the answer is just everywhere. I'm not sure my PB wiped anywhere. Oh no, its first wipe was in Coastal, I remember. The Glen Moss boss. I was mad about it. Yeah, we had a really good first one-third of the game, and the second one-third is pretty comfy. Uh, not really worried about anything at this point until disc two. Though the Glim Moss boss I mentioned is not disc two, he's disc one. There isn't anything, though, that could even remotely threaten the estimate until the final boss of the game, though. If I die anywhere, it's like, whatever, maybe five minutes. But at this point, first try final boss and we're sub-18. Second, third, third, third. Ah, that's the second one. And it's never the middle one. It's always either the outside one or the inside one. Dragon Quest. Probably not the best. Look at it. What's going on right now is we're wandering around to these towns, and then we're staying at the inn and waking up and everybody's gone. Because some, uh, Hula player keeps visiting these towns and basically Pied Pipers them off. Seven hundred gold. Max. Mean what? Yes. Okay, so I mentioned Gabo getting another offensive option. That's this flame claw right here. Spending 7,700 gold on this, and he's not even going to equip it. Just going to use it in battle to cast Blaze more. There's one boss later that he'll equip it for, and that's it. <laughs> I'm not even sure offhand which boss it is. I'd have to think about it. He shows up and he plays this song, and now that everybody's heard it, he's uh... When they go to sleep tonight, they're gonna fall under his spell and... For them all. But after listening to that music, Innkeeper has decided he's so happy he'll let me stay for free. I mean half price. Fifteen gold for three people. What do you say? You know what? There. you're playing music in. Camera perspective on this scene here is kind of weird, but 
the dude is hovering above the statue in the middle, not standing on the table in the background. Climb the tower. So he's warped us away to a tower. I always, always, always go that way. It's always wrong. I keep thinking, change me. Right way to. I don't think I've fallen in a hole in the past before. In the present day, this um, tower is full of uh, holes that are like the floor is weakened, and if you walk over it, then a hole opens up. That one just right there, and I just kind of walked straight into it. Any dragons have been busted. Pretty confident that number is zero. We're really not doing a good job, are we? I'm left. Seto was a lizard man. That's like. Dragon family. I don't think we've fought anything that I would count as a dragon. Several enemies, I'd say, that would be Dragon Quest monsters, Dragon family. There you go. Did fight a lot of sword of earlier. Cat mages. Cat mage warrior. We fought Drek slimes. That's half dragon, half slime. They breathe fire. I think they count. We've encountered more ice breath than fire breath, though. Third boss of the game breathed fire on us. Like three bosses since then have breathed ice. This bard here is strongly 
implied to be Jan from the uh, Deja Island a couple decades later. In fact, my notes just straight up call on that. <clears throat> but, um... For now... Getting out of here. What's going on is Jan, um... I guess he saw a vision of this island getting flooded, so he kidnapped all the people in the towns on the island and stuffed them up here. Tower, because the tower was tall enough to not get flooded. But, since we charged on up the tower, unlocking all the doors along the way, some of the people escaped back to the towns and got flooded. But, I think they're okay. If you go to each of the towns, there's some people on rafts and stuff. For the tower to be a spaceship. <laughs> That'd be a twist. I don't have time to talk to scholars. Stuff must rebel. Not equal it. So world leaf. I believe my inventory is messed up because I have too many world leaves. Okay. Do have any other seeds in here? Look like it. I'm like to gather. Thirty-one moon herbs. Yeah, well. Anyway, move that. <clears throat> So this is the uh, yeah. layer of Gracos, Undersea City. He's pretty much exactly the same character from Dragon Quest VI. Um, grumpy fish. Likes to hit people with a stick. There's a puzzle in here where you throw pots at buttons. This is kind of the tutorial for it. You can meet the ghost of the guy who invented those pots, and he's very, very proud of them. He's so happy that you can throw the pots so far. It is his life's work. There, there he is. Get you a great ghost. See how badly I screw up this room today. I think I did it pretty well in my PB. Usually forget to hit this button. So let's remember to hit it today. Okay. 
Okay, that's not a problem. I get a free revival before the boss, so I'm not worried about that. Also, I have three world leaves. Okay. First plot. I don't remember the setup for that throw. Pretty bizarre room, but I like it a lot. It's this this gimmick that you've had all game of being able to pick up pots. Now you're actually using it for a puzzle. Okay, I think I've got it. So now here's a trick shot you can do here. I get out of this panel. This saves me from having to hit, like, two buttons. Here. Up, down. Got it. That's very precise. But it stops me from having to hit the switch way up on the top of my screen, and then the one that's right above me. Uh, oops. And I'm going the wrong way, so the time, time gain means nothing. Diver speed fire, does this count as a dragon? Strongest fire breath I've encountered so far. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the switch, I should be able to walk to the stairs on the left. Good. This puzzle is kind of hard to figure out because of uh, just it's hard to you know, see the whole room all at once. The room is simpler, but get up as well. I think it's another world leaf. Well, I have four. That's that's a lot. Where this? Oh no, I don't. I remember. I always forget to do this. I always hit that other button there. This becomes very difficult to realize where I'm supposed to. Go. All I got to do is walk around. It has a lot of stuff in it you don't actually have to interact with. Yeah, I appreciate when the puzzle rooms don't have random encounters in them. I think the Colorstone Mine at the beginning of the game has no uh, random encounters in it. Okay, so... Oh, there's menuing I missed. I don't have a weapon right now. That. Uh, we could have both of those. Okay. I think so. Hero could even fit. The 
that's all I'm done. Do it. Here's our grumpy fish. Try to kill them. Well, they put me to sleep, so I won't. Oops, that wasn't. There's no penalty for dying to this. Gracchus has been turning the souls of these dead people into monsters, and Jan reverses the curse. Souls can be at peace. And he plays another song, which revives both of my party members. Pretty sick. Gracchus just kind of sits there and lets Jan take three turns like that. Yeah. Real quick. All manual. Good. So Jan is in my party for this fight. Um, so again, he's slot two for purposes of physical damage. That hurt. Heal more. So Jan has heal more. He has um, angel song, I think. Maybe it's life song. I don't know the difference. Um. But it's uh, basically Vivify. Oh, a lot of damage. Grumpy Fish is 1400 HP. Oh, well, there goes Gabo. Do I use one of my four leaves, or do I wait and see if Jan will do it? have four leaves. Why, thank you, Jan. Got us. <laughs> <This is fun. clears throat> 
Beat down your party laughing. That's basically quad hits. But it barely hit anyone. Not counting turns very well, so I'm... Uh, upper again? Upper should last for like five or six turns. But I want to use it like every third turn. Oh, my ma- my- it's just maxed out. Alright. Getting real close. So, uh... So, raising your defense in this game, you cannot raise your defense by more than, um, 200 points. Which is kind of a strange, uh, you know, the fact that it's a static number, but that's what it is. So, um, after you've capped out, you can't even cast upper on yourself to refresh the duration, similar to how you can't continue to cast sap on an enemy with zero defense to refresh the duration. Uh, that's why I don't just stack up or all the way up at the start of that fight. I cast it, I know it's say to cast it three times, wait three turns, cast it again, and then just keep doing sword dance. Right. So yeah, but with his dying breath, he destroys the bridge and he assumes that that kills us. But wait, we have a bard who can create portals to the tower. He just creates a portal to the tower. <laughs> This is one trick. The door said lol JK. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> oh no, we're trapped here forever. Nah, I'm just kidding. much it for this island. We just gotta walk all the way back to the portal. The estimate is about 18 hours. We're about halfway. Schedule says 19, but we had a really good start, so we're ahead. Someone else can afford to screw up. Still gonna be me. I'm just gonna die to Orgo Demir for two hours. <laughs> now, my experience in doing runs of this game has been like wake up Saturday morning immediately go live, and then still go to bed two hours later than I normally would. <laughs> Though with a little more grinding, I would get the run down enough to where you know, I'd still be going to bed at a reasonable hour, but I also don't want to dedicate, like, every Saturday of 2022 to grinding this run out. I kind of touched on this earlier, but I picked up this game earlier this year with the goal of getting a sub-18 hour time, and I got one on like my fourth or fifth run, which is about how many full runs I expected it to take. Just playing the run, because it's so long, you know, like, to play one run of this takes you 20 hours to finish, while well, you just also practiced the engine for 20 hours, right? So, you get good at the basics pretty quickly. That's all I do in the right? Herman. Okay. We're just walking out of here. 
I also got my third wizard ring from Gan. Lost it to me on my way out. Yeah, even though I've uh, only completed four, you know, complete RTAs of this game, today will be the fifth, um, I have put more time into this game than nearly any other game that I have speedrun, just because of how long it is. Not more than Dragon Warrior 4, but more than most others. That's a pretty I was also saying earlier that, you know, I, I started learning the game in mid-December and my first full runs were mid-February. Me that long to get practiced enough on the game Oops. Uh, that I felt like I could do a full run. And that was basically just consisted of watching both Keta, the Japanese record holder, and High Spirits, the English record holder, both of their runs. And then uh, taking notes on them, and then walking through the game, I think one time later. Grave states and stuff. Oh, wait a minute. The one time you don't leave. Robina. Got the. Difficult is it? Um, there are parts that are more difficult than others. I've been describing it as like most of the bosses are not difficult to just survive, but like killing them quickly and figuring out, you know, exactly how aggressive you can get with some of them, I think is where most of the difficulty comes from. Um, but most of them uh, don't have like complicated patterns that you really need to memorize or anything like that. Just need to remember know how much damage they each do. I was considering doing segmented runs of this before we started allowing Turbo. Because I had been considering learning this run, but my options before we changed the rules to allow Turbo Controllers were either run in Japanese where Turbo Controller would have been allowed, or do segmented run and break it into like three splits. But let me change the rules, so I just played the, the full run. Okay, we need the armor shop. Here. Like this island? I hope you don't like the boss. <laughs> this is the island of Probina. Don't know how much it's worth my time to... Uh, everything that we're doing here because we're not going to see here it is in the bag I still have the bow tie from earlier so I'll start with that uh Yeah, the ruling change was part of the reason I was trying to push to get a marathon organized this year. But I don't even know how many runs in this marathon actually uh, are affected by that. This and DQ8, and then that's a couple other English runs, I think. Dragon Warrior 4. And 11. Nine is a DS game, so you know, obviously, you can't buy a turbo controller for a DS. And there's a couple of runs being done in Japanese that wouldn't have been affected by the change. You get used to this. 
I really feel like I'm skipping something in this bar. Hope not. <laughs> 